Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We will call this work session to order. Uh, thank you for being here this morning. A couple of comments. Our clerk, is, uh, our clerk has identified that we have no one assigned to speak this morning, so we'll move on with the first presentation. I just want to uh, note before we start with our squash presentation that we do have a presentation tomorrow. And it will be regarding the presentation of achievement awards for our youth sports athletes in Douglas County. But that will be provided, or that uh, presentation will be given by uh, Director Gary Dukes tomorrow. So with no further ado, if you could, Mr. Terry Gable, please come forth and present the Splash update. And I know you've uh, had two great men with you this morning, Mr. Jay Dix from Motorola and Mr. David Good, who's our Director of Splash Communications, that will be speaking as well. I do. So thank you. Uh, and good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Terry Gable. Um, I'm the boy on Altabella, and I'll be doing the January Splost update. Thank you for the introductions with Mr. Mr. Jay here and David. Um, so with that, we'll we'll get started with uh, with my report, and I'll bring Jay up once we get to the uh, to the status report on the digital radio system. Um, so in looking at the overall pie chart for the program, we ended up. Uh, Pushing out a good bit of money in November and December, a lot of it with Motorola and the uh, in the radio system. So we we invoice around two, 22 million dollars for um, uh, currently through uh, through December to finish out the calendar year. And by program, like I said, a lot of that money came out of uh, the uh, EMS and public radio system. We're right at 13 million there, and then with transportation. We up around 6.6 .6 million. A big part of that money is coming out of resurfacing. We finished up the the 2018 resurfacing, uh, with exception of some some minor things, and I'll go over that in just a second. And then with with parks and recs, we're still we've got some stuff that's just now getting under construction, and we got some bigger uh, numbers coming in with design. We're making some progress with that, so those numbers will start jumping up uh, certainly in the spring and moving into the into the summer. And hopefully start getting some drier weather. With um, our collections for the month of November, uh, we had a good month in, in October. Uh, it came in; it was the highest month we had in Splash Year Two. Um, so November was a little bit less than that, uh, but, but to be optimistic, we're still well above the the projection line of two million dollars is what we projected. So uh, right now we're still in good shape with uh, with our numbers coming in for the year. We still got December to go. And keeping our fingers crossed, we had a lot more people getting out to brick and mortar and, and making some purchases at the store. Uh, overall, for, for Splash Year 1 and 2, uh, the revenues totaled about 40.6 million. Um, over the 20 month projection, they had, uh, they had estimated about just a little over $40 million. And we're, we're showing, we're in the black here, we're showing an overage for both years now at about a half million dollars. And then if you just if you just break it down by Splash Year Two, it looks even better. We've had a good year compared to Splash Year One uh, with the revenues. Uh, November was right at 2.14 million. Uh, over the eight month period, uh, we we have an overage. If you just compare those numbers, right at 930 million dollars. So we're approaching a million dollars there, and hopefully that trend again will continue, and, and our revenues will will stay above that projected line. Um, looking at the bond servicing and payment obligations, we made that first payment. The total for Splash Year 2 was $17.6 million. Uh, we made the first one in October, and we'll make the second payment April 1st, uh, the, the larger payment, of course, and we'll finish out that, um, the payment for, second, uh, for Splash Year 2. And the revenues, it was taking nine months that, the, to reach this point with revenues, and we're there now, uh, so the revenues are in to make that first payment. So with that, um, I'll get into some of the project status. Uh, this is a list of completed projects. has not changed uh, drastically from our, our last report in, um, in November, uh, but that'll as we move into the next first couple of months of 19, we'll, we'll start adding projects to that, and you'll see that list starting to grow in fire. Um, so with uh, the countywide digital radio system, um, I'll ask Jay to step up and, and 
kind of give us a, a hands hands on first uh, overview of it. Jay, I've got a couple pictures there. That's at Fire Five, I think you can right. if yes. you want to kind of. This is a uh, this is Fire Station Five, and we were stacking the tower here. Uh, but that tower has been erected now. We yep. uh, also put up a fence around the tower, and they're getting grade final grade on it so we can get ready to rock it. Okay. You got some more. Uh, no, just that one right now. I, and you know, we had talked about it. I'd love to get we'll get some more pictures up. And maybe we'll do next presentation of some finished okay. towers. I think it'd be great. Okay. All right. So I'm Jay Nix. I'm with Motorola. I'm project manager for the uh, radio system for Douglas County. And um, I'll step through each one of the sites. So uh, Douglas Sheriff's Office equipment room, we've been able to go in and get that done. Uh, the equipment room's been uh, modified so that it'll, it'll house the communications for the uh, console equipment at the Sheriff's Department. Along with the Douglas County 911 Center, we've also done the electrical and the grounding upgrades there as well as stack the monopole down there. So y'all might have seen the monopole. Uh, if you went behind uh, the jail back over toward 9-1 in EMA. Um, the existing city of Douglasville Tower, we made modifications in there for the DC plant and also have continued to cut over that equipment that exists now from AC to the new DC plant, okay? Um, so we've, we've made good strides going that way, getting ready for the radio system to come online. And then um, as far as Fire Station 5, you see these pictures here. This tower's been stacked um, and the building set. We're also um, currently right now putting in, we've already put in the DC plant. Um, we're wiring the AC and DC feeds on that. And we will start installing the RF equipment at uh, Fire Station 5 probably over the course of the next week and a half, two weeks. Um, Bill Arp, uh, we've also stacked that tower um, that's also a 300-foot self-supporter set of the building, and we're in the process of doing the DC plant there at that location as well. As also Fire 11 is stacked, tower stacked, building set, uh, fences up. Uh, we haven't finished the rocking in the final grade yet, but doing that, and DC plant and the uh, electrical there well. Uh, fire 8's in the same. Uh, we stacked Fire 8 tower actually on December 22nd. Um, that building was set, and um, we're working on the electrical and the uh, DC there as well. And then at Fire 13, we removed the old Fulton County Fire 13 400-foot tower and set to build a new building there for Douglas County on that site. So uh, we're moving forward there. We also have installed the DC plant on that position uh, building too, and we'll be wiring those over the course of the next two weeks. Um, the, that takes us into uh, the next three sites we have because that's six of the nine uh, transmitter, transmitter locations. So the next site that we'll be working on and breaking ground on will be Austell Gas. We have the FAA and the FCC um, uh, approved on that site and we'll begin on it probably in the course of the next two weeks. Um, the Factory Shoals location um, has been approved by the city and so um, we, we we cannot file the FAA or the FCC information yet because of the government shutdown at this time but once that's through cleared we do have um, all of that uh, that paperwork ready to file as soon as that's opened back up um, and then South Douglas uh, of course that site is still a, a negotiations point with the county and so forth so once the uh, once that's done, then we'll be ready to go there. Uh, other other statuses or other things that we've been involved with over the course of 2018 and tying into this year is we've also um, been uh, installing the mock alert, which is the fire station alerting at every fire station. And right now, currently, we're about 90% through with those. Um, we're working on station 10 right now, and then we'll do headquarters and then uh, the only thing that would be left there would be the, uh, the install of the lights, but all the controllers, the speakers, the wiring, all that stuff's all been installed. Um, and so um, we're in pretty good shape there. Um, also, the even tie recorders, both at um, the 911 center, um, we're getting we're putting in a new even tie recorder, even tie recorder there. Um, that, that recorder is actually uh, installed and, and actually working right now. Um, we'll do the install on the SO and they had to do an upgrade on their um, Cisco phone switch 
system so once that's complete that database will be saved and we'll we'll update and install finish installing the oven tide there for the SA um, so currently um, that's where we're at with the project um, we're making great strides we, we did we were able to get a lot of work done even with the rain <coughs> last year so uh, we've got a lot of people working hard and, and we've had a lot of uh, help from uh, the chiefs and uh, Jason with the MA and Mark and everybody so it's been really good to work with everybody any questions about anything Questions from the Commission. I'd like to comment if they say that y'all doing a tremendous job of making sure that the project gets moving along and it is uh, moving quickly. So thank you so much for yes, what you're doing. Commissioner Robinson, I believe we have a comment. Vice Chairman? Yeah, I, I'm just going to keep it on, on this topic, which is um, um, the, the new tower. Um, so I, I heard you said all still gas, you said factory shows, and think about site selections. The, the fire station number nine that will come online at some point as part of this plot, is that identified as um, um, a site selection of the future? I mean, are there future um, sites that we will need to make it 100% covered? Or I'm just trying to feel out what I'm hearing. Well, fire, you're talking about fire station eight? No. Oh, no. future. 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 future nine. Oh, future nine. Okay. okay. I'm thinking, yeah, maybe there's plots. Can y'all give me some insight on this? I'm just curious. Um, Our architecture is designed right now to give us a certain coverage. My question is, is it 100% of the county or is it only part of it based on coverage? Sure. So how do we get to a, a higher capacity? Is it, it uh, we're just trying to... Well, you know, I mean, what, what the, uh, we also have a... Uh, Consulting. Dean. 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 Dean, <laughs> Dean is with Tusa Consulting. Yeah. Uh, and uh, our contract calls for 95% coverage okay. of the county. Yep. 95% of the time in building. In building. Uh, as this system gets built out, uh, we will actually test the system to assure that that actually comes to you know fruition. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's part of what TUSA does. They make sure they hold Motorola accountable. Uh, uh, they work great together. Uh, but as far as will we need extra tower sites, yes. uh, I don't know that Douglas County can afford a 100%, 100% of the time coverage. Uh, the, the towers that we're building are a million and a half per tower. Uh, we feel very confident that we're going to have the coverage we need with this nine site system. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and again, part of our long term capital planning um, is to probably anticipate huge needs and growth, right? And we're trying to get ahead of the curve. And since we're out here and we're in that process, I was just trying to anticipate it may not be cost effective to try to strive for that 100%, right? At some point, it's, it's you know, diminishing returns for, for every investment dollar. So I, I do, you know, I get that. I would just I just want to make sure that since but since we're in there, um, since we're in there, you know, well while you're in there, you know, operate on this, operate on that, let's get it done right. Um, my my question is, can we um, um, should we plan for it or is it will we have dead spots? And that was always the conversation we used to have and even with the sheriff. It's those dead spots, those very bad areas that, okay, we're, but in this area right here, especially along Gordon Road down that Riverside, it's like, okay, bad signals, bad everything, and you may get, though you got 95% across the board, 97 in some areas, but it's 92 in that area. So I, I get <coughs> how, I understand how it works. Uh, how do we close the gaps in those areas that we really need? I mean, so it may be worth the investment. Is it, is it worth planning for it, or are you saying we're good? That's what we want to if, if there is a building, that we cannot get coverage in, yeah. they can actually put a, a, a an antenna in the building, bi -directional a bi-directional amplifier that will give us the ability to talk inside that building. Does that really work? And I won't believe this because I mean, again, I, I got bad six cell signals where I live on Riverside, and I've got the little you know Comcast inside supposed to be amplifying them all, it's hanging them <laughs> on Henry. How does that? I mean, but no, to, but to that point. Um, mm -hmm. Will it matter? I mean, you, you can sell me one thing and tell me that it, it amplifies my, but I'm like, I'm, I'm a citizen, so I don't quite believe it 100%. So I need somebody to tell me technically from a public safety that those type of solutions actually 
Yes, sir. So if I may, as, as we laid out the design and the conceptual solutions for this project, and really for any public safety project in the U.S., or we sit there and we set a public safety standard, which is typically 95% coverage, but then we also say in dense building areas, warehouses, government buildings, schools, whatever, we add 20 dB to that because that building's got loss. So that ends up creating more towers to co make that coverage. Then we took the rest of the county and said we want 10 dB buildings. Now what, what's all that mean? You look at a single story wood frame house, we call that a 6 dB building. You look at a, a typical um, strip mall, we'll call that a 10 to 15 dB area. A uh, hospital, a school is 20 to 25 dB. So we try to build the system to make cover those buildings. We also ask the public safety officials, tell us what are critical buildings in your area. And so with all that said, at the end, we test for all that. And we, we confirm that we've got 95% coverage throughout the county in 10 dB buildings throughout the county, in 20 dB buildings identified and then in 20 db building areas such as city of douglasville or wherever other warehouse locations or dense buildings are at and we'll go test all that and we'll go test all the critical buildings as well that we've identified what's that do that really starts answering your questions in the end has our needs been met has the contractual needs been met by motorola and it also i, I call it it gives it a, an fyi so if there is a critical building that's not covered by the radio system and public safety officials say we got to have that, then we look at putting a BDA in to cover that. And yes, they do work. You typically see them in convention centers. You'll see them in hospitals. You'll see them in some government buildings according to the, the density of that building. So at the end, we find out that Motorola kept their contractual commitment to what we asked. We get information to know if we got to cover other areas to your point. Yeah. And I, I won't believe this time, Charlie, you, before, I, I, you, you, you hit, it, hit it on the head. It's about outcomes. I mean, I mean great technical information, but sometimes we're sitting here like, okay, now what did he just say? We're trying to translate it as far sure. as the outcome. Um, I was in a situation where a neighbor, they, they, uh, they were in a, a, an apartment complex and the, the police had to be called. And um, interesting enough, uh, the, the police officer had to, or sheriff company had to keep going in and out of the apartment to get a signal. Right, and so again, that's current state. Sure. And so again, we're spending 16, 17 million dollars. I just truly want to hear and have assurances that what we pay for, that we have confidence that it works. And, I mean, again, so that's a real life, it ain't an anecdote, it was real life experience. Like, oh God, he got to walk down the hallway and go out there in the middle of the parking lot. Like, what the, right? So we were just, this is when it gets real, like, okay, will you really put a deeper field, right, in those bad areas? Not the areas that are wide open in the field, we get that, but it's just in those pocket areas which is what this system was always about. So anyway, we're good, guys, y'all good, thank you. Yes, sir, yes, thank, thank you. you. Okay, Mitchell has some questions. Stay, stay, stay with us. Yes, okay. yes sir, don't leave, don't run on We won't belabor the, the whole uh, 95, but that 5%, um, you spoke about using repeaters or microwaves or whatever these, you know, I don't know all the, the DBEs or OEPs or OPPs, <laughs> but with those, uh, are we are we assuring ourselves that 5% for the safety of our law enforcement and, 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 and others, you know, are we, are we really knowing where they are? Once we get this 95% done, will we know this building or that building or this location or, uh, or Riverside? There's a bad spot there, and we got 95% of the county, but that spot is just going to be up that 5%. How do we address that particular, let's say, area or building with those repeaters that you mentioned, or we're going to put up, you know, another pole somewhere that would kind of repeat itself to kind of get up the coverage that we need at 100%? Because I know that the goal for us is 100%, but your goal at objectives is 95%. So I'm going to give you an example of a, of a system that we just did, and it was actually the competitor system. So in this case, the city of Norman, Oklahoma said, I want 97%, and they was willing to pay for that. Okay. And so vendor came in, it was a competitive contract. Harris came in and said, we'll guarantee 98%. When we got to the end of that, we tested all that. We tested the 20 dB buildings on uh, the OU campus and throughout the city, 
and they actually exceeded that coverage. So typically a vendor comes in is very conservative and will sit there and say, yeah, I'll guarantee 95%. We typically see it above that. Okay. But then it gets to your question, mm -hmm. what if it's still 2 to 3%? Right. So we will know that. One other thing that we put in the test criteria is we sit there and say no concurrent grids and we'll lay out a grid pattern throughout the county that will reflect these 20 dB areas and 10 dB areas. But we also say no concurrent grids, I think it's six, it's like quarter mile grids can fail at one time. So that way no long stretch of highway or no, long, or no neighborhood or any of that can fail. Mm -hmm. If it does, we gotta, we gotta correct that. So, and then in the, at the end, again, it identifies where these areas are. We go back to the public safety officials. Is this critical? And if they say yes, okay, then we got to, to your point, we got to figure out how we're going to cover that. And, and then I guess at that point, we'll, as a county, need to decide on how much more we want to invest to kind of capture that five or two, whatever percent. But, but we'll know where this place meant, or this dead zone would be, though. Correct. Right. right. So, Correct. You will. You yes, will sir. know. Okay. I mean, once we do the test, we'll know exactly uh, the, you know, the outcome of every grid. Right. And we'll know the, the outcome of every area. The other things, though, within this huge Atlanta Uasi area as well, and, and the county's looking at doing this, is partnerships with other County. counties or agencies. And Fulton County is a good example. You've got that ridge along the south and the east side of the county. Mm -hmm. But Fulton County, by going into there and not putting that infrastructure in your county, is feeding, actually feeding back into your county and covering right. that ridge. Right. So partnerships with other counties and other radio systems that have already been built is also another means to increase that coverage. And we partner with COG, correct? Yes. So, yes. Okay. okay. And, but, you know, to keep in mind that, that on that Riverside area out there, that Fulton Fire 13 tower site, the 400 footer that we took down so that you could put on, you would go yes. on that new 400 foot guy right. that Fulton County owns, right. yeah. that helps cover that entire area. Got it. And it's actually coming in from Fulton County. Wow. So, right, so it's, it's a huge difference. Compared to what you, right now, compared to what you've got, you've got one site, basically one BHF site, right? So you're gonna have nine sites and they're spread out all over the county. That simulcast throughout the county. If you, if a user, uh, whether it be a sheriff's deputy, a police officer, or a fire personnel, when they key up, they're keying up the entire system. Right. It's not just one tower. Gotcha. Gotcha. Right. So, and, and, and and there are nine towers. There's nine sites. Yes. Okay. Nine sites that we deal with. And um, speak to when we go live, how we go live, how we test. Okay. So for the general public, we had a conversation earlier this morning, though. But can you kind of share that part of it, like kind of what that that initial plan is? So once test? we okay. okay, so once we get the system up and online, we'll go through an optimized system, which we'll bring in our what we call super techs, and all our super techs work with the shop with our local shop at Bearcom. We'll we'll go in and optimize the entire system. Okay. Okay. And once we let uh, Tusa know and the county know that we're ready for testing then we actually will go out we set up teams to go out and actually drive the entire county grid wise and it tests the uh, sensitivity radio sensitivity of the county for each grid based on whether it was a 20 db for say in building in building for city of douglas 10 db for the county wide um, and then we actually set up for the count for the county buildings that were um, um, brought up in the contract mm -hmm. so that we go in and actually test those buildings mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. um, once we test all that um, uh, then once that's done we'll know where any any there are any spots that are that are vacant or <clears throat> excuse me from coverage standpoint mm -hmm. but um, there'll be teams set up where the teams made up of Tusa the county and Motorola personnel and each one of those teams to be able to go through we not only do a receive sensitivity test with radio, but we also do a voice test, which is taught from a subscriber unit to a known location or the mm -hmm. dispatch center, mm -hmm. okay, for every one of those grids. Gotcha. So envision your county, it'll have a grid map laid over it, mm -hmm. and we will go through every grid, and there's really two tests that are done. One I call the propeller head test. It's to truly find out that the system's been optimized to the simulcast 
all the nine sites all simulcasting at the same time. But the other test will be in the grid, can you hear me now? And that go, that'll be a public safety official going back to dispatch, will grade it going inbound and outbound and making sure that it passes. And the end result would be contractually that if there's a thousand grids, 950 or greater pass. Got it, got it. And don't get that 5% that you, yes. the 95% that you yes. want to okay. We do the same thing with the buildings. So all the buildings that have been identified, there'll be a team that goes in there, will grid lay out the inside of the building We'll test hundreds of points according to the size of the building, whether it's a single story or multi story, with the same results. Got it. And, and last but not least, with the shutdown, filing your paperwork, uh, don't know how long this is going to go. No, sir. You know, but at, at this point in time, you'll just have to just kind of, I'm assuming, play it by ear and know, you know, when, it's, when they get back online, uh, right. you'll file. Right. And get in line. As soon uh, line as, as we have the, we, what we're doing now, we are able, <clears throat> excuse me, we are able to do <clears throat> the uh, the SHPO, which is the historical preservation, mm -hmm. the environmental uh, reports, and so forth. So we're doing that up front right. for factory shows, mm -hmm. um, and we've also laid out the tower location, so we have coordinates with elevation and so forth, and all that paperwork is ready to go. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of government open back up for right. that to be sent in right then we'll get in line and, and go from there and, and this is my last question what is a a, a, a moan on mine pool what is it monopole. monopole oh yes a monopole is uh it's a self-supported tower but it's basically a pole okay it, it's self-contained the structure itself is self-contained um I think a lot of the cell sites you see where it's just, just that one single pole, pole in the air. That's, that's what it is. Monopole. It's like a flagpole. Got it. Yeah. A big flagpole. Okay. Yeah. It's like it's like a flagpole is a big one. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> it's five foot in diameter at the base. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. I yield mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, sounds like you all have uh, implemented or should I say executed uh, a tight airtight implementation plan. It sounds amazing. I like it. But I just had questions. What are your plans for continuous monitoring once these sites go up, the towers are activated? Is there some type of technology that would allow us to say, okay, this one has come off the radar. We need to find out why we don't have reception or in this sure. area. What, what, what's the plan? Well, about? we we actually have uh, the each site has a, a piece of equipment in it that actually monitors the external alarms mm -hmm. that take them back. It takes it back to the central location, 911 center point. Um, where to notify if there's an air conditioning that has a problem or a generator that didn't start or power that's lost or uh, door, intru door intrusion and so forth, mm -hmm. as well as all the equipment that's in that site. Every repeater, uh, every router, every switch, every controller, everything. So this site's monitored 24-7. Every site's monitored 24-7. Also, part of that $16 million cost that you see is the warranty period and maintenance for years 4 through 15. So that's already been planned in all of this. The system will be maintained uh, by Motorola. Um, there's software services in that. There's, uh, we all know in the IT world that when we update to a new Windows platform, sometimes we gotta buy a new computer. All of that is included for a full 15 year life cycle to take care of this system as part of that overall generators, cost. HVAC. Well, that's it, HVAC, generators. I mean, it's, it's all the supporting equipment as well as the technology in the sites. Mm -hmm. oh. I'm going to go ahead. <laughs> I just want to make sure I don't want really there to be any confusion about on the years four through fifth. I'm Jason Mill, I'm the emergency management director. Our contract for this, uh, under the, what we're doing right now does not, it covers one through three. We get the four through 15, that's where, like Commissioner Robinson said, that's where some more costs come in. That's the, where we have to plan for and uh, start, uh, and look at. You know, this is what, but, so we're good through one through three, but we have to look ahead and in the future for that four through 15. I just want to make sure, I didn't want anybody to come back and say, right. we misrepresented or whatever. I wanted to make sure that that was clear, that was clear and everybody understood that, that we got to pay for four through 15 and it's not cheap. But we have to plan for it. And we have to uh, we have to do our due diligence to make sure it's done properly and monitored properly. That's all I wanted to say. I just want to make sure that was clear. Thank you. Thank you so much. How much, uh, Director Mahal? Uh, Mahal, how much time do you think you have left? In the um, con when, they, when, uh, when we uh, <coughs> we put up a bid, um, the the people who returned bids, we did a cost estimate for uh, fifteen or sixteen year, uh, years. You're talking. Um, through 15 was it 
I don't know that number. No, 20, it was, yeah, we can come well, back I, I can come back and talk and come back and take because we, we, we asked that and we asked that number to be included in their bids when they put in for it. And it was considered when we picked Motorola as our um, as our vendor because we wanted to know long term what it would cost. So that number is pretty much out there. Tusa has been working with um, mm -hmm. Motorola trying to negotiate some stuff out to get us the best price and what's covered and that, that um, long term that we could bring that forth to the board. Just send it to me and I'll make sure to finance and the board. Yes. Yeah, but we know we know what that number is because we negotiated it in the contract. Okay. So we'll get it to you. Yeah, I don't, I just don't you know. Oh, you don't okay. call, okay. Is it worth the hundreds of thousands? It's millions. It's millions. It's millions. Yeah. Yeah. Per year? And no. We'll get the number. Exactly. Uh, a million and a half per year? I don't remember exactly what it was on. I don't the think contract. it's that much. But um, it was but I'd have to look. the years one through the years one through three after final acceptance are included in the original contract. But um, it was proposed for years four through fifteen be provided as a price. But I don't remember the price. For that. We, get you that. we don't give you a false, false hope or false number. We give you an exact number because we have it. Okay, we'll just uh, look forward to those numbers. <coughs> Thank you. Can have that number before our finance committee meeting today at 2 yeah. o'clock, please? Uh, is, it, is it possible, uh, Director Milholland, you can have those numbers before 2 o'clock today? Yes. Finance yes, okay. no problem. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Thank you. <coughs> Any other questions before uh, Mr. Nix? Okay. Next you okay, Mr. Nix? Yes, ma'am. Okay, no more questions from the board commissioners. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Thank you. So with that, we'll. We'll continue on with the project updates. Uh, the 2018 ambulances, there were two of them, both of them ran and um, have been processed uh, and, and paid. So we're good there. And those will start showing up. Some of these will start showing up on the completed projects. Uh, the fire truck has been delivered and invoiced and paid. And that's a snapshot of it. Um, so we have that. Um, in now so getting to the some of the projects on the fire this is our station three renovations um, so we we got the temporary trailer in about the middle of uh, December and uh, finally got it set up and once we got the crew out the fire crew out uh, with a lot of help from chief and his staff um, we were able to hit the ground running and the contract was actually able to get in and get the outside work done before the rain hit. And as most of you know, it stayed wet in, uh, through most of December. But he's made a lot of progress. And he, uh, right now, he is scheduled to be uh, completed um, before the completion date in the contract, which I'm thinking right now, based on conversations I've had with him, is going to be around April 1st. So we're looking forward to that. Um, just a quick shot of the building. So the, the area on the right is, is the <coughs> new area that we, we um, added on and that's where the new the new bedrooms will be um, the smaller section that's bricked was completely gutted and I, I mean completely <laughs> gutted and that and they'll go back with a bigger kitchen bigger living room um, and like a little conference room that they'll have <clears throat> of course we're redoing the bay areas and everything on the outside has been redone and a new roof so I think the facility once said and done even though it was a, a renovation would be a nice looking uh, building that they can be proud of So staff vehicles again, we're uh, we did um, we're headed the game with those. The three vehicles that the chief had ordered are in and have been invoiced and paid. Um, I brought this slide back up. I showed this a couple months ago, and I'll do this with each of the programs. Uh, this gives just an overall view of the project list uh, with the chiefs. Nothing's really changed. Uh, what we're, what if you remember the goal of this? It's what I've got in yellow is projects that's potentially at risk uh, with, with forecasting on some um, on projects that are not quite the construction. Uh, we're able to do that with this and also keep the board kind of updated on, um, on where we're at the bottom line. So right now we're able to get down with Chiefs 32 million. We're just slightly over the budget uh, with, the, with the tow vehicle and air and light truck. As you can see, the one that Commissioner Robinson mentions, uh, Station 9, is is in there and right now everything's on go to get that funded um the we've subcategory uh the chief has two million dollars in renovations we're tracking those individually and that's what you see in blue there <coughs> and with station three uh and on down to those smaller projects so we still have 1.3 million dollars in that pot and 
We're already starting to work with the chief on some future projects for 2019. Um, he's got a priority list of fire stations that he wants to start with, and we'll be working with him and getting some things under, under contract to start some of those uh, next renovations once we wrap up fire, uh, fire Station 3. So with that, uh, that concludes the fire. Any questions with, with fire before we... Commissioner Robinson. Hey, let me Yeah, real quick, I, and again, in, in the spirit of, of long-term <coughs> planning, um, fire station number nine, um, which is a vertical, our third vertical, is part of the SPLOS. Um, obviously, there's some softer costs associated with that, which is staffing and so forth. Um, above and beyond that, there's also uh, a capital expenditure. So real quick, um, remind me, and, and Chief can answer that, whomever. Um, is that a three-bay or is it two-bay? And how yes. big are the machines that are we going in there? It, it, it's a three-bay station. Yes, Chief. Uh, and there will be a ladder truck, a pumper truck, and an ambulance assigned to that station. Okay. Uh, that's, that's our current plan. Yep. Uh, so. Okay. So we go. All right. So, and I'm, I'm almost finished with that. So with that, that um, uh, have we, are in this current SPLOS, did we already budget for those three vehicles at roughly a million dollars or, or less a pop? Or do we anticipate this coming later? In other words, is that on the list that we knew that we were going to be putting equipment into that building? Or is that something I need to sort of anticipate loan, you know, my general fund three, four years from now? No, we, we anticipated that in, in this splost. So okay. the, the station and equipment. Okay. The only thing we can't pay for with the supplies are the personnel. Okay. Understood. Okay, I just need it for the record, just right. as we planned. Mm -hmm. So and how much yes, have sir. we allocated for that? Uh, the last ladder truck we purchased was 1.3 million. Right. I think we had a million allocated. Yes. Uh, and our pumpers, we were figuring at 550,000 a piece. <coughs> and our ambulance is at 225 a piece. One inch, so that's about 2 million in, in, if I did that fast. Right. Yes, sir. And we, what we're showing currently budget is 4.2 million. 4.2, and how much is it going to cost to build this building? Yeah. Any, well, and we do have we do have a set of uh, draft plans. Uh, I think that's something we need to uh, staff start working up some as some hard numbers on what the actual building will cost. Okay, let me. And up. right now, that how much did you allocate? How much did we appropriate? It's okay. I'm yeah, yeah, 4.2. So 4.2, and we're already at <coughs> for the building itself. No, that's that's total. That's total. So it'd be that would be minus the equipment. Minus two million. You, you, you said about two million 2 there. 2.2. You think you can build this? 2.2 2 million, 2 million dollars for the fire station. Yeah, How big is the fire station? How many square feet? I, I, I don't remember the square footage uh, off the top of my head. I can get it for you. No, I, I'm, I'm just again it's order true. magnitude keeping. I mean, it's the beginning of the year. We just. These are things we're just trying to anticipate long term. Like, yep. okay, we're, we're, when do we begin to incur uh, these expenses? It's like the SPLOS got its component taken care of, but I'm trying to anticipate, okay, so when do y'all think that this fire station is going to come online? 2022. 2022. Okay, so we're on the back end of the SPLOS. Yeah. All right, so, okay. That's all I need, though, Chair. Mm -hmm. I'm good. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we're good, guys. Thank you. Okay. Okay. You can proceed. Yes. Thank you. So we'll move into transportation. Again, we have the completed projects there. Um, and then the resurfacing program, uh, with 2018, C.W. Matthews was able to finish uh, all the resurfacing on the roads before the holidays, which was great. Um, what, what's lacking was the permanent striping. They still have that to do. Um, once that's done, we will close out 2018 resurfacing. Miguel and his staff has put together the um, the list for 2019, so we're, I think we're ahead of schedule than we were last year. We'll hopefully be able to get in on the street a little bit earlier, uh, give the contractor more time to get the projects done, and hopefully uh, we'll we'll get some um, some some good bids too uh, with with that. So everything's moving along, and again we're we have uh, we're moving towards 2019 resurfacing out of Splost. The uh, El Meg resurfacing for um, uh, the 2018. We're still about halfway through those. There were 48 roads. I think we're about halfway uh, completed with those. Uh, th those are being done in-house with maintenance, uh, and then they'll continue that weather permitting. 
And then this slide is just a placeholder for the match that we took out as floss for the LMIG fund. Um, now moving out, resurfacing into um, some of the other projects, the Lee Road Extension Study. Um, the final draft is, is in. Uh, they've been holding um, meetings for comments uh, for the draft. And if I understand it right, we're shooting for um, February to uh, present that to the board for, for review. Our Stuart, Stuart Mill Road intersection. Um, so we've, we've made it, we've overcame a hurdle with the, the drainage that we had to get through. If you remember, this is an old project that was shelved back in 2002. So some of the plans were done. Uh, the roadway plans uh, were completed at that time. Uh, Jacobs has done a good job in working through the analysis on the drainage. That project has two large drainage structures up underneath it. And as you can imagine nowadays with environment, environmental permits and so forth, that's taken an effort with WSA to get that approved. Um, there at that point right now, I'm hoping to see plans in February uh, to be sent over to Miguel to be reviewed. And shortly after that, we'll start getting revised right away plans uh, and Miguel staff can go ahead and start that. And then we'll be moving towards hopefully um, the right away phase and that'll drive that component uh, until we can uh, get that completed and then we'll go to construction um, again, anticipate sometime this summer. Uh, John West and Bright Star, this is being done by S SEI. The plans, the plans are completed here, 90, about 90% complete. Uh, Miguel, is that's in the right-of-way phase. He's finishing up some right-of-way appraisals. The right-of-way is being staked. So this project's moving on. And again, you get into right-of-way phase and it, it just boils down to the, how quick Miguel staff and, and working with the property owners can get them get some agreements on, on pricing and, and get those closed out and we'll be ready to go to construction with this project. Sweetwater Church Road um, is this is the one that was a, a joint partnership with Pauling County and Douglas County. Uh, Pauling County has the plans are done. Um, they they're prepared to send the, uh, all the final deliver, deliverables to Miguel. Uh, they had one one small parcel in, in Pauling that they needed to acquire, and Miguel also has one too. They they've been a little bit more successful at this point with theirs. They've got a. Um, an agreement set up right now. Miguel's reviewing it uh, to get theirs closed out. And the only thing that's holding this project at this, this point would be uh, Miguel moving forward and getting an agreement on that one parcel. Uh, we get it closed out and we'll be able to go to construction with this. So that's very close, just like the John West intersection. Uh, Chapel Hill Road intersection is a little bit behind uh, those other two. This is a, a bigger project, as you remember. Um, it'd be one of our larger uh, intersection projects uh, once we get it uh, to construction. Um, we're in a, still in the preliminary design stage. If you remember, we're trying to fit this project in with the footprint of the future project so that we, 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 we don't have to tear out any more than we need to uh, once we do come through with, a, with that larger project. Right now, this is going to be a, a, a three-lane section with curb and gutter and sidewalk on the east side. Um, the plans are right now we're gearing up to do a, a, a public public information meeting in february miguel's working with the uh, designer to do that uh, once we get that done and we'll be ready to move it move to the next <coughs> phase of, uh, of design and we're showing right now um, this project will be completed next next september and this will have this will have several right away impacts uh, and right away will be a will, will take a, a considerable more time with this project than on the other one Highway 5 at, uh, at Douglas Boulevard, if you remember, this is the right turn lane going north on Highway 5 uh, onto Douglas Boulevard, a much needed project. We're going out, Miguel's got uh, documents ready. We're going out for design services in February for this. The Highway 92 Anawaki project is uh, right now is inactive. Uh, we'll be, I'll be waiting on uh, we what we had budgeted for that project was six million dollars and that'll need to be taken up into in the uh, transportation committee to decide where those funds um, how those funds will be dispersed <clears throat> 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 
Post Road Bridge at Dog River, this is the GDOT project, and I'll keep you guys posted. Uh, it's under contract. The contract has several other bridges statewide, and I just need to hone in on him to find out exactly when he thinks. I was trying to give him some time to get some construction started, so maybe he can give us a, a little bit more specific time frame on when he's going to be in Douglas County to, to do this bridge, but everything's on track. Uh, Miguel's anticipating maybe some right of way. Uh, hopefully that'll be very minimal and won't be anything that'll hold the project up. Uh, the next is the three uh, sidewalk projects. These are um, moving into the final stage of, of right away. Miguel and I have been, I mean, uh, design. Um, Miguel and I have had an opportunity to, to review those. I think we're in good shape. We're going to, uh, these are small projects, but I've told the designer to, to set these up to we'll bid them out separate and give the local vendors opportunity to, to bid on some of the small contractors. Um, he's anticipating being completely done with, with design. Uh, towards the end of February. Uh, we're going to encourage them not to uh, impact any property. I'm ho hoping we can do that. Uh, but if they end up, maybe if they end up with any type of easements, we will have to go through, a, go through that process. But the goal is, is to, to put these sidewalks in without any impact on that, might, that may require additional right of way or any, really any easement. It just seems to be getting more difficult to, uh, to get agreements nowadays with, with property owners. So that, we have all three of those, and they're tracking the same, um, at the same pace with the design. Uh, transportation, uh, let's see, let me catch up with my slides. Procurement, Miguel's got, I think he got a, one vehicle in. We're still waiting on those big dump trucks and the mowers to come in. So we're still lacking that for 2018, uh, but they're, they're in fabrication. So in looking at the uh, the slides that shows the overall for transportation the overall project list, I've, I've made a few modifications to this. The one thing I did with the category for resurfacing, well, the county's decided, which I think was a great idea, to do an overall payment evaluation uh, for the entire county. It's been a long time since that was done. I think that'll reap some benefit, certainly some benefits as we, as we move forward with trying to budget and uh, and. And maintain your, your existing system. Um, so we, we have that shown now under the, the 2019 resurfacing. Outside of that, the you know the re resurfacing program is pretty pretty set with three million dollars a year uh, for that 18 million dollar budget. And then under economic development, we have added placeholders for the Maxim Road and State Route Five. That's a GDOT project that that there's going to have to be a required match on, uh, and also the the construction engineer position that the county's opted to to do and we've got a, a placeholder for that uh, in supplies right now um, the intersection projects uh, are basically the same we did you'll notice Anna Wake is not there but we did uh, Miguel and Mark and I we, we did come up with some numbers the program not program but budget those intersections so you get an idea about where the uh, what they'll cost but those those intersections are going to require some traffic studies uh, just to develop scopes initially, um, that's something that we're, we we had to kind of uh, discuss and, and make plans for as we move through them. But obviously, those first five are under construction. The first four, uh, and then we were about to start the design on Highway Five at Douglas Boulevard, and the other ones we just got we're just showing right now to try to develop a, a budget and schedule. Um, as you move on down the the list. Nothing has changed. What I what, what I did do is we the post road bridge at Dog River that that became a GDOT project. We had budgeted 3.3 million dollars, and we continue this. This is in the red. You know, we continue to chip away at that, and uh, we thought it'd be a good idea to start showing those uh, what we either have a placeholder for, or, or we've actually had money come out of like the equipment, for example, and we're down around 800 thousand dollars if if this. If this stays the same, it's not changed by the board the transportation committee. So, with that, any questions on transportation? Commissioner Carlton. So, this may be a question for um, Director Miguel. Here. He's right behind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, my question is regarding the right of ways. I know sometimes those kind of hold up our plans to get things moving. So have you already started working on those and kind of getting a feel for who or what? 
for, for the projects uh, that we have uh, underway or about to uh, go to construction, uh, we have either obtained a right of way or uh, are in the process of getting the appraisals and the uh, title searches needed to then begin the process of dealing with them. Uh, so, so yes, uh, we do not anticipate, for example, the Chapel Hill. Cha well, the Chapel Hill is, is a pretty substantial project. We are not at the point where, where we've defined, uh, on the design, where we've defined uh, the boundaries of all the easements and right of way that's needed. So, uh, acquiring that is going to take perhaps a year, a year and a half. So, the, so that project will be targeted for, you know, to, out, to allow that time for us to get the right of uh, The project initially was, was going to be uh, about less than half the size, what it is now going to be. Uh, it encompasses four intersections, where initially was going to be just the two. So uh, it's a most, much more robust uh, project. Uh, so it's going to take time to go through that, but uh, we we anticipate in the timeline what is going to take to do the acquisition. We build that into the schedule, and uh, the only issue, not the only issue, but, uh, but the one issue that uh, Terry mentioned that we've been running into is uh, folks are not as agreeable to selling uh, the land, even, even the easements, even temporary easements. Yeah. I guess the, the, the economy may have something to do with it, uh, or, um, I don't know, but uh, it's gotten more difficult everywhere, not just uh, for us, but, um, but yeah, we have to uh, build into the schedule enough time to acquire properties, typically a year for every 50 parcel, so for Chapel Hill, uh, we are right uh, at over 50 parcels to acquire, so at least a year, if not a year, and some change to be able to do that before we can do the project afterwards. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Mitchell? Yes, and, and speaking about the parcels, so uh, the Highway 5, Douglas Boulevard, right away, I mean, are you how are you? Because I know I, I know have we have we worked out the details on both sides of of, of the, the street for that. Well, we have like, there's two different projects. Right. Yes. The, the northbound is just on the one side of the side. Right. Okay. Uh, we have a sense of what it might look like, and I've had uh, some preliminary discussions with the property owner as to what we're trying to do and what it might look like. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we have not advanced to the point where we've got a design that shows the details that we could proceed to actually close on the, on the purchase. That, that's coming, that, but it's, it, it, you know, it's a process. So um, that's where we are on that project. The other side, that project is uh, going into construction uh, in February. Yeah. Okay, and these are splash funds, correct, that we are pulling out for that particular one? Because I know for we the other one, for the right of way, we right. did uh, splash funds. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, back to the sidewalks, uh, New Manchester, Lithia Springs, and Chestnut. So, um, we're in design. Mm -hmm. Should be wrapping, wrapping it up um, by the end of February. By the end of February. Is what he's telling me. And hopes, um, that, and hopes that we'll get these guys in. Uh, this year. Yeah, and we'll, well, yeah, we'll go out. Actually, be good topic weather-wise. So we'll go out for, um, again, as long as there's no easements that we're trying to avoid, uh, we should be able to go out for bid for construction uh, in March, early spring, and it'll be a good time. You know, the small projects, uh, they'll go quick, and we'll be under construction spring in the summer. It just, that's just been such a long haul, but I, I get the process that yeah. we got to go through when we got to go through it all right? Just those those sidewalks been kind of on, a, on the top of our list for mm -hmm. you know a long time and trying to get locals and trying to uh, avoid a yeah. way of trying to get them in or not get them in. But right, okay. But at least we'll we'll, we'll I, I'll give you that much for working towards uh, getting them done. And I'm pushing I'm pushing the consultant. I've told him you know made, I'd say this is a priority small projects and we need to get them out. And I'm pushing them. Okay. All right. Um, outside of that, I, I'll give you a lot of, out of this segment. Okay. Thank you so much, Commissioner. Mm -hmm. Mission, um, 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Real quick, I'm just going to piggyback on um, Commissioner, Commissioner Mitchell's regarding sidewalks. <clears throat> and again, um, you know, it, you know, again, I want to I thank the citizens for giving us the opportunity to, 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 to tax ourselves and to, to use these tax dollars to get stuff done that we really haven't been able to, and it, it, it's okay. Um, but but what are the things that the taxpayers believe is a priority? A lot of times, you know, the things that we talk about here in these, these meetings is things that they really don't get to see, they don't get to hear, right? They, 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 they get it, but then they know that it's the provision of public service. But at the same point, again, as we know, the mantra is we want to experience our tax dollars on a daily basis. So it's the roads, it's clean up the landscape, it's all those things, right, that are pretty, beautified place. Um, but also regarding our children, and I'm, I'm piggybacking on this whole notion of sidewalks. When we identified these three sidewalks on uh, projects, they were supposed to be quick wins like street lights, right? And we were sort of waiting for them to come to pass by way of um, uh, a benefit. Um, in transportation committee meeting, I'm just this is sort of a long way of saying a segment that we do um, plan on looking at where else in the county can we have safe passages or passage to safety between schools and parks, between uh, major subdivisions and um, um, school systems. We were approached by the school system recently. I was personally saying, hey, um, you know, um, can we expand that program some kind of way strategically? Um, a citizen asked me a question whether or not we can add um, Lithia Springs High School um, to the list of sidewalks because if you move, walk from there down to Lee Road, which we know ultimately will be widened, well, resurfaced, and expanded, um, the question is uh, how do we align our history? I know our development code takes care of things going forward. We need sidewalks, we need all that. But we have 140 some odd years old of not really having the priority of having sidewalks. So we know we can't go back and rebuild sidewalks over every place in this county. And in some parts of the county, it doesn't want sidewalks. I get that. Um, but where it makes sense, um, is there a way that we can at least begin to create a list and anticipate what those are? So my question to Gail uh, or Mark, have we ever looked at all the schools and aligned them with all the parts that throughout, um, is there opportunity for sidewalks throughout all of them? That's my question. There should be opportunities. Um, I don't know if we've specifically looked at it. We've never looked at that. Or it's been specifically looked at in the past. It may have been. Okay. I know we looked at trails. Else. You know, think about sidewalks like a trail, right? And, it's, and again, we're, we're keeping it limited, but between schools and parks, has anybody done a configuration to say, okay, here are all the parks, here are all the schools, here's all the paths, should we have sidewalks? Yeah. Just, Collectively, we probably have not, probably on an individual basis. We have looked at those from time to time, but I don't know specifically which one. I, I, have I haven't before. seen anything uh, addressing any particular area. Okay. All right. So, so uh, we'll just make a note. We'll take this up in transportation committee. We did not. I want to bring it forth. Everybody, Madam Chair, that sidewalks is something. Um, working with our partners, etc. So, no action taken for you. I'll take it up in transportation committee. Yes, so I'm going to go to my second point, which is. Um, the, the NOAP 92 project that you said has now become inactive. Uh, we do plan on taking that up in our transportation committee, uh, which is um, where do we allocate those dollars? I think I heard you say six million. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the committee has not discussed this, but what the leaning is, at least the general conversation, is that, okay, there's um, another strategic area uh, um, that, that probably benefits more districts, specifically Lee Road. Uh, and so uh, perhaps that could be added to the pot of money that we know we need to have as our match. So, uh, Miguel, just for the, the record, how much do we anticipate um, the Lee Road widening shall cost? Just the, the uh, widening uh, project from I-20 to Herman Road. Yep. Will uh, the latest estimate is 21 million to complete, 18 million for construction, and 3 million for utilities. Okay. That is the total amount that it would take to get that project completed. Okay. All right. And so, 18 million. And what would be the amount of our match, roughly? Is it 30 percent, 40 percent, 50 percent? Well, at this point, um, the best that we could hope for is something uh, approaching perhaps 40 percent, 50 percent, and uh, 10 to 11 million dollars. Yes. Quick math. 
All right, so we've got five million dollars, perhaps, that could be allocated out of the NOAP 92 project. Give or take one million should be, you know, put back into the pot to be shared across whether it's the lights or sidewalks, etc. But that means that we're halfway there, right? In other words, we're not quite there with five million out of 11 million. We we, we still need to find some more money, and I guess we'll talk about that, the transportation. I guess we're just setting expectations when I hear we make projects inactive, mm -hmm. that we're having a public discourse, a public conversation about right. perhaps where we should re re uh, move that. So Understand. I won't belabor it, Madam Chair. I just wanted for the record. Okay. You okay? Perfect. Thank you so much. I yield. Thank you, guys. Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay, with that, we'll move into uh, parks. Um, this completed projects. Hope to see that continue to grow. Um, the first one is our boundary waters concession um, building. And I, just a couple shots. So this is, again, weather permitted. He started this before December, and he got that started, and that area is set underwater for several weeks. Uh, but he was able to finally get it dried out. You know, we went through a, a spell there for a week or two where it dried up, and we got that slab poured Friday. Um, so right now we're, we're 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 still on track to finish this project on schedule. Um, he's anticipating around the end of April, uh, the first of May, to uh, to finish the concession building. So uh, right now we're we're in good shape, even though we had to fight through the weather uh, to get this one completed on on schedule. Uh, the Boundary Water Soccer Field lights. Um, that contractor started. Uh, he did a little bit of work before the holidays. Um, but he, he came out uh, last week. These are the poles. Uh, you know, we set, we set new lighting poles. Um, there were six poles total, but I thought I'd just take a picture that give you an idea. Uh, those go up quick, and those are completed. Uh, so right now, the only thing left for the soccer field lights, which is just adjacent to this, is what one of the concession buildings are for. The power, we decided to put the power in the building, so he'll have to wait till the building's completed, and we'll... Uh, all we need here is just to get power to it and test the lights and we'll be good to go here. The uh, the tennis courts are still in, in design stage and Gary and I need to meet with the architect to make sure he doesn't need anything from us to, to finalize this. Again, this is a small project, not much, got a, some small um, structures in it, but mainly the tennis courts would be just rehabbed, I mean, yeah, rehabbed and resurfaced and new fencing. Um, the multi-purpose rec center, uh, we've made some good progress with that through the reviews and the committees. Uh, we've given uh, Sutton Architects, Sutton, Sutton, Sutton Architects the go-ahead uh, to move into his, uh, what he refers to as design development. And he's able to cut his engineers loose, and that's mechanical, electrical, so forth. Um, we've got, Gary and I've got another meeting set up with him in, in the January to start picking out fun stuff, the colors and the, some of the finishes on them. On this so he's again I think we're on track based on our schedules um, Pete has told me we should have the design completed uh, hopefully around May uh, towards the end of April um, and get moving the construction plans and then have that project lit uh, sometime by sometime late summer uh, we've, we've anticipated 12 months to complete it once it starts the uh, the senior center both of these projects are tracking very close um, this is with Carter and Watkins. Uh, we've had some things that we increased the scope on the senior center some, but still within budget. Uh, but it is tracking the same. They, they're anticipating completing um, somewhere around the end of April, the first of May, um, and we'll be able to move into uh, in the construction phase once we get a, once we get the building completely designed. So both those projects are are bigger ones in parks, so they're, they're tracking pretty close. You know, this, the, obviously the senior center is a little bit smaller structure and shouldn't take as long um, to construct as, a, as that rec center. Mm -hmm. uh, Bill Art and Fair Play, that I've got these teamed up both together. We've had them like that. Uh, we've had one architect, Alan Bell, to do both of these uh, concession buildings. Uh, he, the, the plans are complete. I'm getting final approval from uh, the health department for the septic tanks, and I'll be getting, sending these over to Bill. Uh, probably by the end of the month, uh, not in not the first of February, to uh, put these out for constructions, and that, that'll just be the buildings, the new building at uh, each park. The 
uh, Fair Play Park lights. So concurrently with the building down there, we also had led a project for the uh, to replace all the lighting, which was in poor condition. Um, Cornatcher out of Forsyth County got that. They started work this week. You know, part of that project was demolition, and they they they've just about re uh, removed all the old poles. Uh, so this project's on on um, on schedule, and he'll have it completed. Uh, we set 90 days in the in the contract, so it'll be completed here very soon. Mm -hmm. uh, and with that, uh, miscellaneous equipment uh, is complete for Gary, and he's I think looking forward to 2019 and what he's going to be purchasing of this upcoming last year. And then finally, the project list. Uh, I hadn't made any changes to this since last time I showed it to you. Um, again, we're, we've got a lot of needs in parks with obviously with a limited budget. The so I guess what I'm mainly focused on right now is the um, Bill Art and Fair Play. We want to get the bids in for those buildings and make some determinations. Uh, we had the we have a project set up ready to go for the fencing and the dugouts. Uh, once we get those bids in on the building, uh, we can make a decision maybe if we're if we're going to be able to do the fencing or not and then of course we'll move on down the list once we get that done and with that i'll take any uh any questions on the parks yeah i'm not um mitchell around here is he in the door okay he's not all right never mind. all right I'll, I'll take the lead on this all right so back to um parks um, but I heard you say, and again, for the public sake, and I, I won't ask this question every month this year, but since this is January, we're, we're kicking it off, um, and obviously this is an important year. Um, what I heard on the senior center, uh, well, specifically the community centers, that we anticipate that it will be live fall of 2020? Based on current schedule, yes. Fall of 2020. Fall of 2020 is live. Right. Um, Director Hallman just followed my line. Mm -hmm. uh, that we're trying, so that, that building will be live. And when do we anticipate the senior center will be live? Um, late summer. Late summer 2020. Okay, late summer and late fall. Mm -hmm. Late summer and late fall. We've got two buildings coming online of 2020 at the same time. What, what is, all right, so that's, that's the construction part. And part of this, again, just setting the, the, the public's expectation that along with that comes um, a, 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 a complementary um, funding component. Um, how, how many, Jennifer, what is it, about a million dollars for this community center and half a million dollars for the senior center by way of staff? Can somebody and answer that, that, Gary, or somebody? I know the senior center is about a half a million. I'm yeah. not quite sure about the rec center. About the same for the rec That's center. Right. We su we submitted that uh, breakdown in this last budget that mm -hmm. we submitted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So a half million dollars, a million dollars um, in 2020, which means we'll have this conversation later this year, <coughs> uh, recognizing it's only for basically a quarter of a year, right? So really 2021 is when this will, a fully load will hit. Is that right? <coughs> that? Yes, right. yes, for sure, 2021. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, again, one of the things that we, uh, we, we just historically have always noticed from, from county government is that we we, we edge on, on being transparent. Right? We like, just tell the people what it's going to cost. Mm -hmm. Now, I've always wondered why there was, there was just sort of this apprehension just to say, well, they know that it's going to grow the budget. There's no way around it. And it's just, uh, and so what I'm trying to do is make sure we're educating people that, well, they knew that we've got to add people in. The last thing we need to have is three verticals and you don't have anybody in it. Um, and, and so the, the message that we're, we're trying to get out ahead of the time is that, yes, we recognize that we've got these buildings coming online. Yes, we have to staff them. But yes, that we're, we're, we're anticipating and we're planning for it, right? So we're trying to make sure we, we set proper priorities at least the recommendations that come out of um, our various committees that we've anticipated. The last thing you want to do is wait to the very end and say, oh, by the way, here's the impact of this, and um, we ain't got no choice. No, you, you shouldn't treat the public like that. There, there's a way to, to do a proper long-term planning that you can sort of anticipate these. So I, my, my point is to bring up, while I know this is a sloth conversation, there, there is a complimentary that says that we know 
Uh, we're not delusional about what, what's going to be coming down the pipeline is that the budget will grow um, uh, regarding these areas. And so the question is how much, how fast you bring staff on, do we bring a full load of staff, do you spread that over time? But think about it, you got two verticals that are coming online at the same time, right? And so how do we anticipate that um, and have that conversation? All right, I'm gonna let that one go. The second part I wanna bring out is um, uh, regarding loan. Did you get the answer? This, I'm going to go back up for a minute, pre previous question. Director Peacock, did you get the answer for the fire? Dean, will you come up and yes, provide sir. the information? Yes, please? sir. <coughs> so a little history here, sir. In the negotiations with Motorola, initially the warranty was for two years. So their cost for years 3 through 15 was approximately $9.592 million. If you break that out over, that's approximately $737,000. $863 a year. Through negotiations, Bill Peacock and I were able to get them to add another year warranty, so that was an immediate 737 cost savings. So years four through 15, you're looking at approximately 8.854 million to maintain the radio system, and that would be split out each year. You pay that each year, you'll pay that up front. Okay. Each year. What's the math real quick? Um, 737,000. All right, so Jennifer? Yes. Got it. And we'll get that information to Bill as well. So right. we're, we're in we're in the middle of negotiating all that. I call the SOW with Motorola on that. So that's how they take care of it. But that's the estimated cost. Yes, sir. All right. And, and again, one more time, we just it's just having the public discourse, having the public conversation, laying down these breadcrumbs as I call them to say, okay, we're at least acknowledging. Jennifer, you got there? Yes, I do. Okay. Yes, sir. You're welcome. All right. Um, with uh, with that, if there's no more questions, uh, David Good uh, will just give a couple slides on uh, local vendors here in Douglas County with the SPLOS that we'll be wrapping up. Okay, thank you. This is good. Yeah, cool. uh, yeah. <clears throat> yes, thank you. Uh, David Good, Director of Communications for the 2016 SPLOS. And here you see our current vendors. Right now we have 65 current vendors, uh, 21 of which are in Douglas County, another 21 are in considered what we call the local area, 30 miles um, outside of Douglas County. Mm -hmm. Then you have 12 that are in the state of Georgia, but they are they are about over 30 miles outside of it. And then we have another 11 that's out of the state of Georgia. <clears throat> uh, right now, as you see by this chart, 64% of our vendors are in county, are in county or within 30 miles. Uh, the difference is, is that if you go to this next slide, you will see that only 37% of the revenue are going to those same vendors. <coughs> so right now, uh, we along with <coughs> staff and also with Molina Tabelli, we're trying to bring up that number of, uh, of local vendors actually getting more and more of the SPLOS. The, probably the reason why it's such an astronomical number now is because of Motorola. Right now, that's equaling out to that, at least that 15 million because we have to actually put it down because it is a purchase order. Then going on to the next slide, this is the active SPLOS project with minority companies. It's 85% non-minority and 15% minority. And that will continue to fluctuate up and down because as projects become active, that means if someone goes in that's a minority that puts in a bid, whether it's a small bid, big bid, or is a sub or a prime, that number will fluctuate. And that's it on those uh, soul slides. Are there any questions on those slides? Yeah, just, and, and I, I, I think I heard it, but um, <coughs> a, a lot of what we do is, 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 is hard. It, it's, it's typically, um, you know, I'll ask you this way. How many women um, owners are involved in this? I mean, we're spending a lot of money. I know it's always been something we've talked about. But, but where are the women? In, 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 um, are there opportunities for women? Are there opportunities for us to work with our chamber, um, to develop? I think I heard something called construction ready um, mm -hmm. at the last time. I think Breezy, mm -hmm. was it Breezy? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, mentioned. Um, so who, I mean, is that, maybe it's something you talk about, who bridges that gap? In other words, I see, I hear workforce development is over here. I hear companies over there doing that. But who's bridging the gap for the administration back to those guys to like, okay, y'all know y'all need to be getting ready for this. Who, 
who is pushing these people to really get ready? Because it seems like that academic track is, is in its own little world, and we're spending every month, every quarter, every year. And so while we're talking about um, developing these, this, this group of people here locally, the administration is spending like it's supposed to be. So who's bridging that gap? Do we, I mean, do we think, I mean, maybe it's a conversation I'm sure we need to have that who is going to really push the people to come, go find those construction ready people and get them to talk to Bill Peacock and get to get into the process or talk to them. I'm, I'm teeing something up. I'm not trying to be the, the champion for this, but okay. hand, hand. Um, Director, I would like to invite you to the Women's History Month in March, and I'll give you the information on okay. working in tandem with the, uh, the Chamber and also uh, the Mayor. And we will be celebrating Women's History Month, so it will be something held at the, the conference center with a lot of women. Okay. So you may be the only man in the room, <laughs> but we would love for you to be there to talk about the opportunities for women here in Douglas County and outside of there in the room. That would be a great opportunity. We'll see what we can do. I'll work with Sarah Ray, and we'll, I'll get in touch with you. Okay, we'll and I believe a couple of months ago there was a uh, a couple of women forum they had over at Deer Lake Park, mm -hmm. and we actually got a chance to speak to a couple of them. And we told them, we you know, got a chance to tell them about the opportunities. And right now, I believe the only woman-owned firm that we are working with is SEI, correct? And SEI has about six of the seven projects. The only other company um, that's minority-owned is um, H.J. Russell, who is the sub on the um, on the whole entire uh, SPLOS program. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, right now we are really trying to make a valiant effort as we go into year three that we actually be able to spread it around more to not only minority forms but also make sure that we really use our uh, chamber of commerce and our economic development to make sure things are getting done and the last thing that i did want to share is that um, if you end up going to the website to the 2016 spots website you will see on there that there is the gis interactive map and when you go on there you can actually see every project and you'll be able to open up the map and actually see exactly where they are and maybe some pictures that's in there so you can actually see what is it that we're actually doing with SPLOS. Okay. And with that, I'll close if there are any other questions. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. We appreciate you so much, um, Mr. Good. Thank you for your presentation. Also, Mr. Gaines and Mr. Nix, thank you so much. Thank you. We're going to move on next to our next item, which will be approval of minutes and the Board of Commissioners. I ask that you take a look at these minutes and then tomorrow we prepare to approve accordingly. Proclamations, we have a proclamation tomorrow, which is tab number four, proclaiming February 5th, Firefighter Recognition Day in Douglas County in conjunction with the State of Georgia Firefighter Recognition Day. And that will be rendered by our wonderful Scott Spencer and Chief. You have just want to give us just a quick update about it? Uh, yes, ma'am. This is done annually. Uh, this was uh, set in place by the state legislature several years ago. It's the first Tuesday in February each year that we recognize our firefighters. Okay. So uh, we appreciate y'all doing that. And we look forward to the information <coughs> today. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Chief. Um, tab number five is our county administrator business. Tab number five, authorization to approve the agreement from Hughes Ray Company Incorporation for consulting services for landscape architectural services for four interchanges on I-20 in the amount of $140,950 uh, to be paid from the tree fund and authorize the chairman to sign all documents and amend the budget. I'll start off with our county administrator. If you want to tee it, tee yes, off, tee it up. And then um, just to let the board know, Matt, this is a project Madam Chair is Ms. Cresson. Um, so contacted Hughes Ray Company uh, so we've been working with them on the proposed contract, and the contract includes design, uh, George BOT encroachment permits, um, bid documents, they'll help out with bid documents, um, construction inspection, um, just to give you an idea. So the intersection, there's four intersections on I-20 we've been asked to look at. So Liberty Road I-20, Post Road I-20, uh, Lee Road I-20, and Thornton Road in I-20. The city of Douglasville is currently working on a project for Fairburn Road in I-20. Um, and I think, it's my understanding, they have a contract with AECOM, I think that's the name of it, um, for design of that intersection, and it's 100000 So this is four intersections for 148000 There is a chance we can decrease that cost when we do utility locates in these quadrants, if the board sees it, go forward with it. Um, so when we 
uh, get the utility locates if we notice that there's no need for us for the surveyors to go pick that up and put them on the plans um, if there's no conflict so that cost could go down to and in case you have I think I covered everything uh, Howard Bray's here well, there he is. He's already at the podium. <laughs> okay. Okay. you have questions for Mark okay uh, yeah all right I just wanted to see if, um, Mr. Bray had a presentation. Did he want to ask a question now or later? I just want to ask. Okay. Yeah, I know he's presenting. Yeah, Howard Ray, HRC, engineer, surveyors, and landscape architects. Um, so basically, just to uh, reiterate what Mark said, this is four intersections. One of the things that we are also in doing in the front end is coordinating with Georgia DOT relative to signage and locations and opportunities and what those processes look like. So it's not only for the entry points along I-20 for potential signage, it's also uh, State Route 78, or I guess they call it State Route 8, US 78, um, 92, Fairburn, and 166. <clears throat> so there's no real design services relative to the signage, but it's more of the due diligence to figure out what can be done on every one of the, the significant entry points into the county for signage. Including I-20? Including I-20, yes sir. Yeah. So that's really the only thing I would add <clears throat> and you know basically this is um, what we believe to be a worst case cost like say relative we're going to work through those surveying requirements but the price we've got in here would be to cover it all in, in um, sufficient detail should we encounter any type of situation so uh, we feel like there's there's potential savings there but we did um, I'm a person that doesn't like change orders so I'd rather be up here and in a coming in under at the end of the day so um, that's sort of the way we've structured it. So again either one more time just I'm gonna, I'm gonna simplify by saying design services around am, am I I'm trying to get a feel or just actual landscape design services. Okay do it landscape design so um, are there some ideas in mind on what we're going to do regarding this or is that what the end result will be because of what you bring to the table I'm just curious. yeah that'll be part of the design process where we'll set up for lack of a better word a um, an advisory committee of commissioners and potentially staff to work through what those um, concepts can look like yeah. they'll be uh, you know we have a thing schematic design we have schematic design design development then, then we move into construction documents mm -hmm. so there'll be a process that we'll walk you through of different ideas that'll be um, you know obviously we'll be coordinating with AECOM um, they've sent us their concept which mimics a lot that's at Riverside I believe currently you know what's installed there that they're the 92 concept looks a lot like that yeah um, so we'll be you know trying to make sure that there is um, a connection yeah. um, in, in in the designs but um, it is our hope and intent that the commissioners and the staff would be involved in working through that design process to figure out what we want it to look like um, then the fun part comes when we start taking all the wish lists and start looking at budget and trying to figure out what can be done all right so then Again, this is just design. This ain't the budget that deals with what's going to go there. All right. Correct. All right. So this is tree fund money. And, and how much is Okay, I got it. All right, I got it. I'm just trying to follow the money. Where, where the bucket money is going to do this? Like, okay, I, you can't get from here. Okay. All right. Then to that point, and, and just so it's for the public sake, I mean, I'm hearing these uh, these intersections along the highway. But the one I didn't hear was Chapel Hill and I-20, so I guess that maybe perhaps I'm assuming that um, the DDI project is like, there's no sense of focusing on that. Yes, sir. That was the... That's what we discussed internally was because of the DDI project. Diamond, coming. Diamond, Diamond Divergent Interchange, yes. interchange yes. for the public. Oh. Yeah. All right, and, and if you'll notice, well, yeah. if I've noticed, I should have taken a picture of it, but so right now they're working on I-20 pretty much from Villa Rica all the way to Bremen, and at the Temple exit, two entire quadrants are taken up with construction zones. Okay. Um, so they do use those quadrants for staging. I understand. All right, it, which is no problem. I just wanted to anticipate um, what I was listening to, and, and again, it, it, it sounds good. And I hear we're talking about signs and so forth, but to the public, and I mean, I don't know if there's a bigger vision. What? Why are we doing this? Because again, I'm 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 for it. I don't hear any opposition for uh, that. But I'm like, okay, uh, is this just like maintenance, or is this sort of a, a broader vision of, of why we're approaching this? 
Beautification. Yeah, gateway beautification. Gateway beautification for Douglas County. Image. And then also just other counties have definitely jumped on board. Um, you know, it's all about competing and making sure that we're uh, setting the standard for beautification in Georgia. And uh, that's, uh, I, in my research, I've looked at <coughs> many counties throughout the United States, and that is how we set the tone. <coughs> that uh, also has an impact on economic development where, uh, the, uh, and also schools. Uh, when someone want to move here and relocate in Douglas County, they said, you know, this is a nice place to live. So, you know, it catches the eye. And also for the economic development component, it is certainly is a, is a game changer and decision maker whether a company decides to move to Douglas County. So my article in the, my first article in the chapter of Hill News and Views for January uh, hit upon and touched upon gateway beautification. So I tried to make it very clear and very known and, and the importance to the citizens. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioner yes. Mitchell? Yes. So <coughs> for clarity, this these will be gateway type entry points of reference at each one of the stops that you mentioned from post all the way down uh, through the road. And you'll kind of put together what the thought process with these committees as to what it could be. And then we'll come back through finance and other and decide on the, are we willing to spend that kind of money to have these nice gateways or entry, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Um, okay. Okay. And so, yeah, they're, it's mainly gateways, but two of the intersections are not on the edge of the county, which is Post Road and Lee Road. Right. right. Lee Road's pretty much barren. Right. Post Road, there's some tree cover. Understood. But understood. Those are included. Understood. And, and I guess we're trying to get some consistency as or some uniformity uh, in doing this with the city, the county, you know, kind of hopefully come across the same somewhat of a look. Could be a brick front, yeah. <coughs> nice pole, and whatever that may or may not be. Am I am I thinking along the right line of what we we're doing here? Yeah, yes, sir. I mean, okay. the intent would be that every intersection would tell somewhat of the same story. Got it. Got it. You know, have a certain look. Yes, sir. Uh, that would be uniform across <coughs> Douglas County. Yes, sir. Got it. And and, and from the shrub to the the, the the brick and so on. <coughs> Correct. Right. But this portion of the dollar and cent is kind of meeting, getting a meeting of the mind as to what this will look like. And then the, the, the next down the road meetings will determine kind of what that dollar amount would be per intersection. Yes, that's correct. Okay. So I just don't want to, just for the public, so we won't think that at 148.9, we're done. Yes, sir. No, no that's not a case. beautiful place. That does not include <laughs> construction. Right. That's only good. We do have funds in the tree fund. Right. Right. Apply towards construction. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and also, um, are we looking at GDOT uh, from the lighting perspective? I know with the Highway 92 bypass coming across that Thornton Road, not Thornton Road, I'm sorry, the um, Fairburn Road here, the lighting is coming. So are we keeping kind of uh, a relationship and a com having conversations with GDOT with the hopes of even Yes, that would be a separate project. But yes, we right, right. It, 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 it would be a separate project, but it would definitely could cover some cost. Yes, uh, just from the Fairman Road perspective. Not that there's others that are out there, but we don't ask, you know, about that side of it. But so we are, I guess. I guess the thing I would say there, <clears throat> it would be my intent that we would be having those communications with GDOT so that we would what we call site the yes. light poles based on where they would typically go in a um, <clears throat> intersection right. so that we're not putting a tree right, right. there. Right. Yeah, so we would, we would, for lack of a better word, plan around where a future light pole would be. So just as long as we're having those kind of conversations, because if not, you're right, we could put a tree down and then all of a sudden GDOT comes through and say, well, we were coming through here to, to make a right away of some sort. Mm -hmm. And now you got that tree gone at that point. Yeah, we'll take those into consideration. Right, okay. All right, I yield back. Mark, could you enlighten the Board of Commissioners about our previous meeting with GDOT? Well, a week ago we met with them and you did enlighten them about our plans for the beautification. Yeah, we did talk to them about the beautification, possibility of street lights, um, and we've gone through the encroachment process before Howard's gone through the encroachment permit process mm -hmm. and essentially get a permit from the Georgia DOT to, mm -hmm. to do these projects. So yeah, we did discuss it with the uh, area engineer 
and some of her staff, mm -hmm. along with other things. But specifically about Fabry Road, I know, I know there's others, but Fabry Road, I know for sure that that, that is coming. Yeah, well, Fabry Road is not included in our, and as far as the design of the landscape is not included in our list. That's included in the city. The city well, well, that's right. Yes, yes. But I heard you did say Fabry Road, if I'm not mistaken. We will right. be coordinating with a right. with, with the city on that, but yes. but I think we still should make sure that that conversation is being had because I know that for sure there's dollars and cents that are coming in that direction that deal with lighting and, and beautification. So I didn't want us to kind of all of a sudden put stuff out there on the fine, you know. Yeah. yeah. We'll let the city know. I'll let right, 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 right. Since you guys have a conversation, I just yeah. want to sure definitely the city kind of get wind of this that they don't, you know. And I, I don't think they will. I think they're they, they're definitely on top of it. I just didn't want to get it all of a sudden miss it for some odd reason so yes okay I was I wasn't even you know you I just jumped in right here <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Carthen I believe you had your hand up yeah my question is regarding once we went through the phase the upkeep of it, the maintenance is that also included in the 148 950 so we will have an ongoing no, ma'am, it is not. not. Okay. But Georgia DOT will require us to maintain that. Mm -hmm. And where will that cost come from? Will it come from our general fund? Will it come from the tree fund? Will it come from? Um, it could come from the tree fund. But we'll have to look at those costs. Okay. It's hard to determine what those costs are until we know what we have planned to go out there. Mm -hmm. But those maintenance costs will mm -hmm. be responsibility of the county. And as we work through the design process, we'll try to present those numbers of, you know, based on this design concept, here's the construction car implementation, <coughs> installation cost, and here's the ongoing. And I think um, some rough numbers from what I've seen in the concept for like the, for the Fairburn Road, mm -hmm. the city's looking at about a million dollars spend on just the plants. And I want to say that the annual um, uh, <coughs> maintenance was around 40 to 50 a year for that intersection. That's what I'm and that's for one. Yes, ma'am. Now, they're very grandiose, um, and so I think that's going to be the challenge is, you know, I think my suggestion, my brother would probably get mad at me for saying this, is that we plan for what we want, and then we figure out what we can afford in this phase, but yet maybe it's already thought out so that um, in the future you come back and add additional uh, landscape pods uh, to continue to build the vision. Mm -hmm. Are you? Mm -hmm. uh, great, great, great conversation. And I'll, I'll be um, consistent along my thread. To Commissioner Carthen's point, it, it prompted something in me. He says, okay. And, and I was in that conversation with GDOT, and I, I just happened to hear it. Uh, but one more time, long term capital planning, right? 40, what, 40, 50,000 times how many intersections? Four. Um, Four that we would be doing four or five post four. row, fair row, four row, five. Let's say five. Five times five is four. four. No, that would be four because we're not two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand cash um, in, in ongoing maintenance, including the broader commitment to uh, to the, the broader commitment to um, beautification and the need to keep the, the system going, cutting the grass, cutting the grass, all of that. Right. I, again, I'm just laying out this. Look at the budget, guys. These are things that we're now becoming more consistent about, not politically in the moment that we go out and do something. We're saying we're committing. We're institutionalizing this approach to Douglas County, how we're going to maintain it. And I'm just, I'm just, Jennifer, just put on the list for us to have a little bucket for that. Um, our list is going to get, it's going to get bigger, put some more cells in it. But, but for, the, for, the, for the public sake, this is a priority. Beautification is top, top of the list. It's a priority. It's number one, I mean, unless I've been told otherwise, that's number one. All right, and everything else is fitting in there, so but it, 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 it's only, we will have $10 and $1, you know, to work with. And we got to balance this out, is my point. And I, I want to make sure that as we make sure priorities, that means some other things may fall away. If we're resetting our priorities for the county, and we're talking about five to 10 years, like we're committing, that means that things are about to shift, right? And I, I just, I'm listening to this, and I'm excited, I'm behind it, but I just want to make sure, are, are y'all listening? You know, and it's really for the public. Um, are we listening to what this commitment is? And I, I think it's the right thing to do. Um, and again, I, I, but I, I'd rather be, I like, I like brutal honesty. Tell me the number, right? Versus sort of like, you know, and I hear staff, but this is probably a, a new era. Tell me the number. 
Um, because we were talking about it, but if you, you sugarcoat this and don't really eat well, y'all mm. start looking around like, okay, well, I see y'all doing like this, that's not good. Y'all got to tell me the number. Tell us the number so we can um, do proper planning because we, we, we can get our minds around it and set the right things. So I just wanted to, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm tracking this. This whole conversation about tracking long term, what is this commitment to us and Jennifer? I just, I'm not sure we got it. Okay. And I believe the intent uh, for this beautification project, as we uh, just have discussed, Mark, is low maintenance plants, succulent type plants, cactus, uh, even just uh, uh, trees, which typically are just rooted by the water of Mother Nature uh, versus sprinkler <coughs> systems and things like that. So we don't, we're not even looking in that, in that direction because, you know, some of these counties have automatic sprinklers that come on and, you know, I know that's a cause of water. So we want to depend heavily on Mother Nature to help uh, maintain our beautification. So thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Ray. Any, any other comment? Uh, mm -hmm. you, you finished? Okay. All right. Yeah. We'll move on to the next item, which is our business item. Tab number six, authorization to accept the Violence Against Women Act, uh, continuation grant from uh, Criminal Justice <coughs> Coordinating Council, CJCC, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Ms. Laura Thompson. Hi, I'm Laura morning? Thompson from the DA's office. This is a continuation grant, and um, just need your permission to accept it. Okay. Any questions from the board or commissioners? Thank you so Thank much. Thank y'all. Tab number seven, authorization to approve a minimum driving age with restrictions for users of Douglas County vehicles who are at least 18 years of age, dependent of vehicle cargo weight classification, as well as specialty license endorsements and driver training and authorizing chairman to sign all related documents. Director Laverne, are you here? Yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman, and good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Um, the minimum driving age for Douglas County um, and all of its, as its departments has been 21 years of age for many years. Uh, but the landscape has recently changed in local governments throughout Georgia as well as neighboring states. <clears throat> With uh, most jurisdictions going to a minimum driving age of 18, um, with requirements of additional training, uh, experience, and um, um, and authorization for every specific piece of equipment that is operated by the multitude of departments. From the city of Atlanta to Bartow County to Carroll County and City to Cobb County, Henry, Gwinnett Counties, Paulding Counties, and more, 18-year-old um, drivers are becoming the new norm. Uh, so with that being the case, I began working with Douglas County's insurance carrier um, and its underwriters to determine the additional risks, benefits, and costs of reducing our age limit with the condition of applying uh, enhanced driver training uh, requirements. We looked at a variety of underwriting issues to include the size of our fleet, the value of our vehicles, the age of our vehicles, driving records of our employees, um, loss frequency, severity of losses, age, and even driving experience. But we were looking at, at all of these variables and, and found a way uh, that we could minimize the effect on premiums uh, this year while enhancing the driver skills uh, throughout in all county departments. Um, in turn, I took this concept um, out for a spin on November 6th of uh, last year and presented it to the fire department. Uh, committee. Um, at the end of that committee, the, they voted unanimously to recommend to the safety board that employees at least, uh, have been at least 18 years of age, be authorized to operate some of its emergency equipment once at the age of 18, but once they meet minimum training standards, experience, and they meet industry standards. Um, the um, the fire chief had stated that um, all, um, all, all of our current fire department EMS employees have, um, if they don't have their commercial driver's license, they've got the F restriction. That's a new restriction here in Georgia that is an exemption for firefighters and those in agricultural business uh, to operate uh, vehicles um, that are normally found to be considered commercial vehicles, those of 26,001 pounds and more. Um, but there is a new um, driving um, 
there's uh, new require these new requirements and exemptions that will enable us to do this um, with um, as little impact on our insurance premiums as possible while being responsible to the Douglas County community and ensuring the safe operation of our vehicles. Of course, given the restrictions, the standard driving age of 21 would remain for vehicles in our fire department, such as ladder trucks, dump trucks, um, even our tent city, um, that require a heightened skill level and experience to operate safely. Um, for example, 18 to 20 year olds in our DOT department would be allowed to operate um, and I'm working with DOT with this single axle uh, dump trucks versus your tandem axles that carry a lot more weight. Um, this way we can, um, we can onboard a um, younger labor pool and begin the training process to bring them up through in government, those whose vocation um, is local government. Um, nonetheless, if approved, I will uh, work with all departments in setting these criteria um, that would enable these younger drivers to operate um, those specific vehicles under certain conditions, um, depending on classification, weight, um, their age, their experience driving, and a lot of other factors. Um, and then on November 6th, I mean on November 20th, um, I took uh, this concept for another student of the safety board and just as the fire department committee, I provided a thorough analysis of the probable insurance premium and accident rate increases um, while also offering benchmarks of neighboring jurisdictions in their minimum age requirements for the drivers that I spoke of. And we are in line with their uh, loss rates, uh, premiums, um, and uh, like I said, this is becoming the new norm. But after this assessment, analysis, and discussion and debate, the safety board itself also voted unanimously to recommend to this board of commissioners that we authorize a, uh, provide um, a minimum driving age of 18, but with restrictions. Uh, this is also my recommendation as risk and safety director. So with that, uh, any questions? Happy to answer. Okay. Any questions from the board or comments? Comments? Pretty self-explanatory. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, tab number eight, authorization to approve a claim for a property tax refund as recommended by the Board of Assessors and Tax Commissioner, uh, Director Walter. How are you today? Good. How are you doing, Madam Chair? Good. This is uh, just a correction of the deed transfer. Uh, back in 2008, there was a transfer of, from a company called uh, FR Cal Terminus LLC of a uh, building in 76 acres uh, to the Development Authority. Mm -hmm. And this track here well, should have been part of that uh, transfer, but it was left off by itself. It's a piece of property that's totally uh, in the floodplain and totally basically useless in terms of uh, the work that the, this company was about, but it was, should have been part of the transfer. And all, all the years it had been in their name and they paid the taxes. And they're the ones that would get the refund, not the development authority. But we just asked the permission to do that based on uh, the statute quoted in the, uh, the right up here. Um, what does that amount? The total amount was uh, four thousand four hundred nineteen dollars. It's for years two thousand nine through two thousand fourteen. Okay. Okay. Any questions from the board? Okay. Comment. Thank you so much. Thank you. as well. All right. We'll move to tab number nine. Authorization to approve a supplemental agreement with H uh, R J Haney and Associates and the ITS Expan Expansion Project. Uh, PI 0012622 for additional items required due to a necessary field modification and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Valentini. Uh, good morning again, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Uh, good morning. This this element. Uh, 
uh, resulted uh, due to the slope of the road being steeper than recommended for uh, the location where we were going to cross over. So we're going to have to go underground with a conduit another 300 feet. The total amount of the change order is a little over $8,000. The overall uh, project is a little over half a million. So it's about 1.5% uh, additional funds uh, that are going to be needed to complete the project. And uh, the, uh, the funds will be coming from the Capital Transportation Fund. Uh, this item was before the, before the Transportation Committee um, at the last meeting, and that was uh, <coughs> a discussion. Okay, any questions from the board? All right, thank you so much. We'll move on to the next item, tab number 10, authorization to renew an agreement with Comprehensive Program Services, CPS, to provide enhanced security electronic services for all covered security electronic systems as defined in the agreement of the Douglas County Sheriff's Office at a total cost of $164,486, and that's no increase from last year, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents uh, subject to final legal review. <coughs> Bobby Holmes. Good morning, Major Madam Holmes. Chair and fellow commissioners. Uh, this is the uh, contract that we have with Winter 2 and 2 and 17. This is a renewal um, with uh, CPS. They contract with us for the company called Black Creek, who is the ones who provide the sheriff's office with the, all of the cameras in the jail, all of the door controls, as well as the visitation system. Um, when we entered into this contract, because there were previously some issues that had kept coming up, this was one of the solutions that we decided to do and we are we are pleased with the improvements and things that we've had since this contract the sheriff asked that we renew this contract um, uh, one of the things in particular that was a, a benefit to us was that uh, there was a change in on-site tech and things like that and so our problems have gone down um, I won't say they've gone away but that's uh, just part of life I think but um, but uh, we we asked that y'all approve this and uh, and move on to this year. Okay. Any questions from the board? Com comments. Okay. Thank you. We'll I, oh, I'll do that. I know what you were doing this time. <laughs> <laughs> I look like you were yeah. uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah. I, yeah. No, no, you're yeah, like good. This. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah. Um, um, real quick question. Um, and, and you're right. So it sounds like um, you and the sheriff are, are happy with the relationship, right? We knew how this for the sake of the conversation. Um, um, and, and I'm okay with, with sort of the outsourcing and the ongoing and, and, and the intimacy that comes with somebody who knows our, our operation and so forth. So I, I, I do get that. I'm okay. The, the question is, is how are we doing with the equipment that you're, that's in there? I mean, somebody came, installed some equipment, they didn't want to provide the ongoing technical support for that. We take it, you guys have taken over that. But what about the quality of the actual equipment itself? And, and, and you know, really I'm always about the cameras. So talk about the cameras. They're aging. The jails opened in 2012. It's been, the system's been in there for six years. There's going to be, from what I understand in the, in the forecast, some kind of possible maybe upgrade. Uh, I don't know if that's a multi-year type of criminal or whatever, but there's going to have to be something. Recently, we just upgraded all computers in this year's budget for the Sheriff's Office. Mm -hmm. Those were items that were all included in the, in the splash. This camera system and this electronic system was also in that time and it's time for some upgrades. Um, basically, we're fixing problems as they come up, but you're right. In the forecast down the road, there needs to be uh, an upgrade, and uh, that is not going to be a cheap upgrade in the process. Right. Right. I mean, that's, that's real material, and it, it's, it's a strategic tool, meaning cameras. I mean, and the whole premise behind the jail is design was we can see anywhere down to the watch, and we can operate this in this little command center. So I'm always going to hold us back to that well, why we designed it the way we designed it, but I want to make sure that you guys have the equipment that you need. So can we? I've ran out of room. There's okay, no you room. ran out of room. <laughs> we need to make a mark. But can we just get a framework? We do it offline, um, obviously mm -hmm. uh, for security reasons, and we can talk about sort of how to quantify this and just we're just putting it on the list. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate okay. it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's okay. I do have a question, just because I'm new. I'm, I'm still learning, but the authorization to renew, to renew the agreement. Um, have we looked at any other <coughs> companies or program services that can provide the same amount, um, I guess the same service? Like, have we compared apples to oranges? 
apples to apples and oranges to oranges to make sure that this agreement is in line with cost. Yeah, I'm going to have to defer to Kenny on that because yeah. I don't I'm, I'm going to defer because I don't need to be cautious about what I say and, and follow up post meeting. Um, I understand from the chief that they have to have this for this year because of the entanglements but that going forward they are looking at other options including changes okay. and i'll just if, if i can get offline about the rest i'll be glad to okay. that's fine okay all right i was going to yeah. okay. commissioner mitchell and i was going to add i'm like you so we're, we're looking at the whole makeup of the future because it sounds like there's going to be an upgrade that's going to be forthcoming that's going to be really interesting when that time comes you're right <laughs> um, but we are <laughs> let me address that outside of no, I got you got that right so we won't, we won't have a conversation I'm just making sure though that we definitely are looking down the road because it sounds to me like uh, from the IT perspective that we're okay but we're no longer nowhere being good as to what we're getting in the equipment side of things not that the services that they're providing is bad but there's just the equipment itself is aging <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and the natural progression of stuff getting all that have right. to be replaced, that's something we're going to have to deal with over the next two or three years. Right. And, and you will be getting us a plan as to what that looked like after this year, so we kind of definitely start looking from a budgetary perspective, kind of mm -hmm. make sure we make that inclusive as to how we, I don't know, quarterly, annually, whatever that looks like down the road, because I, I don't want to get caught off guard and say, here's that number, surprise, and now, you know, we got to deal with it. Also, with the equipment that we got, let's also keep in mind that maybe the sheriff <clears throat> may can't use it because of the, the, the low resolution of it, but we probably still could use it somewhere, let's say in the parks department or some other place that if, if transferred there just for safety perspective or just in the parking lots somewhere, <laughs> you know, so just, you know, just so, I mean, we don't even just toss it, <laughs> you know, so, but I do it. All right, well, we'll look, we will move on to tab number 11, authorization to renew a contract for inmate health care provider services with Correct Health Douglas LLC for a total cost of $1,968,501.27 and an increase, which is an increase of $40,488, I'm sorry, $40,488.27 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review. Major Holmes again. Yeah, this, uh, that reflects uh, basically a 2% increase from last year, which is within, I believe, uh, reasonable. Um, the sheriff is very happy with, with correct health. Um, uh, with the services that we got, we had uh, something last year where they added an additional uh, nurse and uh, made some additions last year that have been uh, working out very well for us, we believe. Uh, we are very satisfied. We've had Correct Health now since 2010, I believe. Um, and we have been very satisfied with what we have from them. Now, with that said, there is a bidding process that we would like to do. I was, in a, I was involved in the last bid process, which we did in, in, in 2015. Mm -hmm. I anticipate this year that we do another one of those just to kind of see what's out there. Um, it was good that I, I don't know if I'll be a part of this one or not, but I was a part of that last one. And it was very interesting what was out there and the different highs and lows mm -hmm. between this. And uh, with all that said, we are satisfied we're happy with them, but from a bidding process, we anticipate to, to bid this out during this course of this year. Okay. Any questions from the board? Okay, we'll move on to tab <coughs> number 12. Tab number 12, authorization for the Sheriff's Office to accept 2017 State Criminal Alien Assistance Program funds in the amount of $12,861 and amend the budget. Uh, Major Holmes again. Uh, this is uh, money that is provided to us from the state that is utilized for the most part for us to do training for jail staff, uh, jail classes, uh, and, and equipment related to them. Uh, and um, we've been getting this, Jennifer, for about, we've been getting it for a while, every year. This is a, a renewal this year for that nine minutes. Okay. Any questions from the board? And then also you had one additional item that we wanted to. I do. I have a request for another item that was not on the uh, business items in relation to, and it's a, a critical uh, request.
request that we have. That's the reason I'm providing it to y'all today. Now, had a meeting board members morning. have a copy. Is this it? Oh, do y'all? Yeah, they oh, do. Yeah, they do. Okay, good. Um, this this involves a Madam, you're ready for yeah, me? You okay. Can start. Um, this involves a five thousand four hundred and seventy dollar uh, contract agreement. Uh, should y'all approve it, the with Kone, as I believe is the name of it, mm -hmm. is the elevator company that we use for the sheriff's office. Recently, we had our elevator test done. We have a total of five elevators, two in the LEC, three main ones in the jail. There is a secondary one out of booking, but I'm mainly talking about those five. Um, where we had an elevator test and we had three failures. Um, as a result of that, one of those failures was in the LEC center and two of those were in the jail. We have a situation at that point where that greatly hampers our ability to do things like food to the inmates, movement with inmates and all that, if we go from one over down to three. And the reason that we're pushing this is next Friday, the 25th, we've been told uh, that the uh, state inspector who does all these inspections is going to shut those elevators down. Okay. This is what we're trying to get done between now and then where we can get this five, this, uh, five year test completed mm -hmm. uh, so we can have those functional. Uh, that's what our little critical incident is on this. Okay. Any questions for the board? And I, I believe Attorney Bernard. Yeah, Madam Chair, I just want the board to know um, years, it, it, when looking at this contract, it, it attempts to limit. Kone, I call it Cone, but Kone, I did now learn something. <laughs> uh, it, attempt, it attempts to limit and basically get rid of any liability of Kone with respect to those um, elevators. You know, we normally don't like that, but I want to point out this contract's only for $5,400, so we're going to try to, I want them responsible for the work they actually do, not any more, not any less. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to try to negotiate over the next 24 hours with them. I think y'all can approve it subject to final legal review, but it's a little bit of non-responsibility for what they do touch, and I think they need to be responsible for what they touch, not what we fail to maintain or we fail to do, if anything. And so I just want y'all to know there's some language in here we're not real comfortable with, but we recognize this is only $5,400 as opposed to hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I understand where they're coming from uh, with respect to their trying to limit exposure, especially in light of what uh, Bobby Holmes just said. Okay? Okay. Okay, Clerk, if you please add this to our question. Okay. Any questions from the board before I proceed? Okay, we'll move on to the next item, which is tab number 13, authorization to terminate the integration of image trend software with target solution software for the fire department and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Chief Spencer. Yeah, good morning again, Commissioners. Good morning. Uh, the uh, last year we changed our remote learner, uh, basically where our guys can get on the uh, computers and do their training. We went from uh, Moodle to target solutions. And part of that contract involved moving some stuff over from image trend, which is a state uh, database that we utilize. Uh, when everything was done and said, the, the money that we're going to pay to do that was not going to do what we needed it to do anyway. So, so instead of spending that money, we're asking to void that part of the contract. Uh, and that's what this, this is a request to do. Okay. Any questions from the board? Okay. We'll move on to the next one. I believe you. Um, thank you, Chief. Thank you. Tab number 14. Authorization to purchase a high vision security system um, camera system for Clint Clinton Nature Preserve at a cost of $4,770 using SPLOST equipment funds as uh, recommended by the Parks and Rec <coughs> Recreation Oversight Committee. Uh, Director Dukes. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, yes, ma'am. We are actually bringing this one back. Uh, if you'll remember a couple of months ago, we uh, asked to have this approved, but it didn't have the necessary storage capacity. Mm -hmm. So we went back and got a new price, and uh, this price reflects the uh, recommended storage for the cameras. Okay. Any questions from the board or comment? All right, we'll move on to the next item, tab number 15, authorization to purchase three Dale Latitude three, uh, 3490 i5 laptop computer computers for use by the Golden Years Club Seniors Group 
using 2016 splossed equipment bonds in the amount of $2,295 as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee. Director Dukes, again. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I met with the uh, Golden Years Club that meets over at Deerlick Park uh, a couple months ago and uh, specifically spoke with uh, Ms. Dolores Franklin, who is the president of the club, and she requested that the uh, seniors have some laptops so they could actually teach seniors how to use computers. Uh, basically a, a portable uh, computer lab. So uh, I told her that after the first of the year we would look into it, we would have some funds. So uh, I'm requesting that we purchase three computers for the Golden Years Club so that they can have a uh, portable com uh, computer lab at Deerlick Park. And that comes also as a recommendation from the Oversight Committee. Okay. Any questions from the board? I do. Uh -huh. Commissioner Carthus. Uh -huh. This may be for um, Director Till. I know in, during the committee meeting we spoke about maybe using refurbished. Yes, I checked on that. So I checked with Russ. Mm -hmm. We don't have any available. Uh -huh. So, yes. Um, the ones we do have, yeah. we're using, mm -hmm. but we didn't have any to send down there. Okay. But we did check them. Thank you. I know. Okay. Question yeah, okay. I I have no problem with it. Dear Lip, great. Um, um, who's going to be providing, who's going to be teaching the seniors that like volunteer people, you know, it's the golden years. They're the, they're the ones that actually, we're going to make the equipment available for them, but they're going to do the actual program itself? Yes. Uh, they have some pretty good uh, computers seniors so okay. they're going to that's the way it will start anyway okay now, if it gets into more uh complicated issues and we need someone to come in we'll provide that all right all right that, okay so here we are dearly I'm, I'm envisioning dearly where will this equipment go will it be um you got a desk or some type of credenza you're building where are they going to sit because i don't recall i mean I, maybe you can put some tables out there is there a cable uh do you rent them um id how are y'all going to tell us how you going to do this we have a conference room, yep, and they'll be utilizing the conference room for the classes. Okay, conference room classes, but how will the equipment be already there, cabled, or will we they check them out? I mean, I'm, I'm trying to get a feel for what do we put in there. It'll be checked. They they will keep those under lock and key. Yep. And when they meet or when they schedule the classes, uh, Mrs. Uh, Franklin uh -huh. will have access to them, and she can bring them in and set them up. And of course, we have Wi-Fi. Yes. Okay, so this equipment is just it's, it's for seniors only, and it's only to be checked out, so no other citizen can come and check them out like a basketball. I mean, I'm part of the, the, the direct, direct center team where I could just be a person off the street. So it sounds like I have to be part of the rec center team to get access to the ball, so it sounds like I've got to be, I have to be part of the golden years to get access to this, or... In other words, if I'm a senior and I want to just be, make sure I understand what this is and what it's not. So it sounds like it's only for education, it's only for seniors. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right, let me let that go. Um, and, um, um, it, was a, it was a specific request from the club. I so understand. we deemed it to be controlled by the club. Uh, that's not to say if the board wishes to open it up for people off the street. We could possibly do that, but it would have to certainly be monitored uh, security-wise, uh, enable for us to do that. All right, so it's only for educating how to use. They think about what we're saying. I want to make sure I get, okay, that's fine. They have this equipment, they meet, and they educate. So it, the purpose, I want to make, maybe there's a broader scope or, or, or use of this, is that, but if it's not to be educated, it can't be used for anything else? In other words, it's just a teaching tool. It's like a student. You only can use this to, to learn how to access Google, whatever it is. It's only for that. You can't use it for anything else? I would defer to uh, Russ uh, to, for security purposes. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I'd have to defer to Russ on that that question. I, I don't think it's a technological. Yes. It's, it's more of a, it's really, it's Parks and Rec. 
If, if my question is really, and I'm, I'm not challenging it, but I'm asking the question, which is, okay, so who else gets to use it? And if not, that's okay. Um, it, it just seems like it's very finitely, it's very narrowly defined for this group of people gets to use this equipment. No problem, but I'm just saying, if somebody else wanted to access it, are we setting a precedent? Uh, and I'm just looking for, yeah, I'll stop there. All right, let, let, me, let, me, let me just stop that. Don't, don't answer that. I can take it offline. My other question is, you said in your budget, since we, you just brought this up, did you budget this or are we amending the budget? These are splash funds. These Spons are splash funds, funds that yes. were available. Yes. Because I, I thought you said we, I had money. I'm like, okay, where's your money coming from? Or if we had money to get, what did you say? Splash funds. No, I, I, no, uh, they were coming from splashed funds. Okay, you're, that's how you said my money. Okay, <laughs> I, I got it. I, I separate the two between department and splash. I'm fine. I'm good, I'm sure. Okay. I yield. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead. And, and, and I'll just, just add, I, I, I get kind of sort of where, maybe where you were going with the whole makeup of specifically for seniors. However, I don't, I, we're not excluding anybody. So if by chance there is a youth that comes through and said, I want to write a resume, and I'm assuming that these laptops will have access to possibly Word, uh, the internet, Wi-Fi, but we'll kind of deal with that as we go to kind of determine kind of what the software entails. I don't think it's going to be, it won't have um, uh, something that, I, I don't want to, I don't know the names of any software that, you know, that they can get online and do something that's not of interest of uh, legal. No Fortnite. Mm -hmm. Okay, so with that, I, I think because the seniors make the request, we kind of focus it in on them, <laughs> and that's kind of where that is. Now, as far as our IT friend here could tell us kind of what that is, we'll probably address that kind of when we get to that bridge as to what that is. Uh, but it's not, it's for seniors, designed and set up, useful for seniors, mm -hmm. but it doesn't exclude uh, Jumbo who come down and decides to say, hey, I want to try to work on my resume, and can I check out this computer? he or she will have the opportunity to kind of do with such so. But now I do have one other question to add though. When it comes to maintenance and keeping this, this stuff kind of up to date and, and kind of moving whatever direction that there is, there is a, a something to think about as to what that is. And, you know, so as a committee, we need to kind of definitely make sure we address that side of it, of how the maintenance of it will, in, in, will happen. Because I know once we get them, in most cases you have what, a, a year or six months or on software, on hardware, on whatever that stuff that there is, we probably want to at least, you know, kind of take a look at that and make sure that when it comes to upkeep and, and keeping uh, that side of it, you get it two years from that date, whatever it is, we probably want to know what that number is so we can kind of start putting it in your budget and continue to make that part of it uh, being updated with softwares and whatever that is. Right. But we'll, we'll defer that amongst our committee and then defer it to the IT side of what that is and, and get a, a true number. Sure. Right, Russ? Certainly. Okay. That's <laughs> <laughs> all he said. <laughs> <laughs> all the whole time. <laughs> thank you, you. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I'm going to move on to yep. the next item, which is tab number 16, mm -hmm. authorization to approve a contract with Carter Watkins Associates Architects uh, Incorporated. Corporation for additional architectural services for the addition to the Douglas County Transportation Center in the amount of eleven thousand two hundred forty dollars and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Watson. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <clears throat> in 2018, we solicited bids for construction of a six thousand square foot addition to the transportation center. Uh, we received five bids, all significantly over budget. Uh, we reviewed those five bids and we did choose a contractor uh, to negotiate with for this this project uh, and so we've been in contact with this contractor who did some value engineering to try to get the the project within budget we have been able to do that uh, the the contractor value engineering uh, removed about $215,000 from the project, which brings the total cost of the, uh, the project to $1,470,500. Now this is a, a grant project, uh, Federal Transit Administration grant will pay 80% uh, of it. Uh, but because of these value engineering items, 
we are having to redo, redo some of the construction drawings. And that's what this request is for, is to uh, contract with Carter Watkins Architect, Architects, who is the architect for this project, uh, to redraw uh, the, uh, the construction documents. Okay, any questions from the board? No comments? Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Presentation. Uh, tab number 17, authorization to renew a contract with facilities technical services for one annual inspection and three operational inspections of Johnson Control <laughs> Energy Management System for the courthouse for the amount of $6,844, well, should I say annually, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Peacock. Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, there are four of these agreements that we're going to be talking about. Mm -hmm. um, the next four items. This one in particular uh, is for the performance of a, a major annual inspection and three quarterly inspections of the HVAC control points and components, uh, including the Johnson Controls energy management system inside the courthouse. This does not conflict with the work being done by Ameresco, uh, uh, and this is something that uh, that's required uh, just to maintain uh, the HVAC uh, energy uh, energy management system in the courthouse. Okay. Any questions from the board? Okay. Mm -hmm. Vice Chairman Robinson. Did, did we? We're say that again. We're amending or renewing. We're renewing the contract. Okay, I get that. Um, and I guess this is something that I, I know we're just now kicking off our new procurement purchasing committee, but this is something I see with. These type of projects also need to come before and have some type of oversight because we got four to shooting through here and nobody's had a chance to really look at them outside the general body. But this has to go forward. This is more for Mr. Cross to perhaps consider. So that's all I need now, Chair. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. I just want to, and, and I agree. Mitchell? I agree. So, so can we kind of see that through the committee on top of one? And the other part of this with our energy. What's the guys? Oh, Ameresco. Ameresco. Yeah. Are, are they a part of this as well? Is that, that has nothing to do with this? Yeah, it has nothing, nothing to do with them. Right. Okay. Hmm. I, I'm sorry, are we suggesting, uh, Vice Chair, that every agreement that is signed for any department within the county should come before the Purchasing Oversight Committee? Uh, well, to a certain extent, yes. And I guess as I work with um, the chair of the procurement, I'm going to go back to, well, what should come before the Board of Commissioners? You know, these things that we have, such as, okay, well, legally, um, Madam Chair signs a contract, so that should come before the Board of Commissioners. But I tend to contend, like, I don't agree with that because you have purchasing thresholds based on dollars that's in our ordinance. This, so to your point, I guess as we get into this committee, we will get directly into that point right there, uh, which is, okay, what should come before us? Some things I think shouldn't come before us, but some things is that, but, but that, that's the whole point of oversight, which is like, well, we get to choose, what, what should we, is, okay, administrative concurrence, just keep going, or such, should this be something that comes before us? Um, but um, I'm, I'm, I look forward to having that discussion in our next meeting, so. We broached this initially, mm -hmm. um, that, that we need to go deeper on this. Um, I mean, it, it, it just, again, we're looking at this, and um, based on what I hear uh, the new chair of the committee, which is like, okay, well, should we do it differently? I mean, let, well, let's get our minds around it. We don't have to maintain it that way. So to answer your question, yes for now, until we can figure it out where we want to go with this, and then from there, we, 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 we move on. So if we one, if Madam Chair decides to bring before the committee that we need to change something, we'll change it. We need to maintain something, we'll maintain it. But, but that's the whole point of the committee. But it's, 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 the point is, I just saw this intersection. Again, we're, it's just coming together. We just had a meeting this week, and you just had this, and that's fine, the timing of it. But going forward, I'm like, oh, wow, these four things probably should have, we should at least have had a chance to look at them. But it's okay for right now. Now, I'm not suggesting that we pause them right now, and I'm okay, but unless you guys say we should pause and, and, and make it push it back through, I'm okay for right now, but to set your expectations, yes, going forward. So yeah. move forward with these yeah. until we get, get our hands around what what exactly we want coming before the purchasing committee. Yes, and no. I mean, that's why I know we was kind of finishing up on that whole okay. makeup. Yes, I, I, I would agree. The question is, 
is this that timely that it needs to happen? If that's the case, then we need to kind of move because of wh where we are with the particular item. However, I agree, we should send it through as we do Parks and Rec, as we do the Technology Committee and everything else, that Tarina should actually have that look and, and check off to say, hey, we all vetted it and this is, it looks to be like what we want to do, and yes, it checks. Now, I mean, that would be everything, mm -hmm. not just certain things, because now we pick and choose and then try to determine that based on what? I'd rather just say, and, and I don't know if you know that's kind of mm -hmm. her direction, because that's her committee. I would say everything, and it get checked off coming from the committee, and I'd love to read the minutes to say the committee supported this X, Y, and Z, and Y, and whatever that is, mm -hmm. versus, versus um, you know, but if this is not timely, if this is timely where it needs to go off today, I can support it, I'm, I'm okay. But if this is not timely, I think it should have went through the committee and let the committee sign off on it, so. And, and oh, okay. Madam Chair, just one point on that. Mm -hmm. All deference to the committee structure. Right. I'm not commenting on the committee structure okay. of things going through the committee. Right. But the chairman's legal authority for spending versus committing is two different things. To commit, to waive, to set terms, those have to be approved by this body to authorize okay. or assign it. For spending authority for a supply under some amount of money is a different, those two notions are not the same. So I just want to make sure we understand Understood. that even if the committee blesses something, if it's committal in nature, warranty, terms, provisions, other than the spending authority, to get signature authority, the board would have to approve certain things. Now, I don't want to go through all of them. I get that. The committee structure is fine to work those through, but I just don't want to imply that the committee can just bless everything no, that's done. but it, it's, the committee is only a recommending body. Right. The only thing you're doing is that's recommending right. X, recommending to, to accept this authorization of the renewal of the contract, blah, 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 blah. And, or not recommended it, doesn't mean that we as a board may override that and say we accept it. Totally agree. So it's a recommended body, that's all that is. So I yield. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, but at that point, I can, it still begins the bigger picture because we did bring it up in, in, in our first meeting, which is I'm, I'm back to these um, the authority of the, the directors, the purchasing direct, finance director, um, it's their sign off, right? It's up to 50,000, 75,000, 20, whatever the number is. Uh, and I'm going down this path with professional services. And you know, it's something I've been harping on for three, four years. That we, we it, it's a convenience of, okay, but y'all let professional services do this. Uh, oh, it's a contract, it should come over here. I see inconsistency throughout these 10 years of how we do that right there, professional services. And so that's why I'm like, okay, I, I'm, I'm just suggesting that the chair will take it where she's going to take it, which is, y'all not consistent with that. You use it intermittently when you want to push something through, so either we're going to allow Madam Chair to have the same power, or we're not going to limit it cons inconsistently, which is, wait a minute, so if it comes through on an email and a task order or something like this, as long as it's not a contract or a sign, she can order stuff I'm like, oh man, that's y'all walking through the, the gray shadows of government. Don't do that. So my point is to bring the, the policy up to a point where it's consistent. Why are we hiding? Well, you know, the, the, we, I thought it was a contract. And I just don't like that type of language. I don't like the way we move um, through the substrata of government. Well, if, you, if it's professional services and it's allowed, that we don't have to competitively be able to do these things, then be consistent. If there's real authority that says, well, why are y'all coming before the Board of Commissioners if you've got a signing authority of 50000 or 100000 Why is it over here anyway? And so I'm, I'm seeing a conflict that I would like some clarity. Um, I just want clarity. And that's sometimes I was watching CSA. And sometimes you do things to get clarity. And I don't think we've touched that policy in a while. Um, and I know Madam Chair is, is going to take, um, she, I mean, we're, we're sort of setting her, <laughs> setting it up for her to go deep because you, you, what you're hearing is some pent up stuff that we've never really went and dealt with. So we, we're going to get into this and get it to what we think is, we're comfortable with what we're listening to. And so, I yield. I don't believe it is. Right. Let it go. And I'm just going to leave on that note, Matthew. Okay. Okay, this is it. So is this time sensitive? It is. Oh, it is. Okay. So these services all begin in January. Yeah. Got you. Okay. The fiscal year, January through December. Say no more. Uh, I'm just asking for, but I, I just, like I said, Madam Chair um, of that committee, you know, I know if it's it's time sensitive, we need to kind of move on it. And if it's nobody has an issue with that, I, I say, you know, kind of do that. But 
moving forward, I think the consistency needs to be as we are doing now with the committee structure. So that just you know, when I yield that. Thank you so much, and I'm, I'm, I'm very um, optimistic and confident that um, our Madam Chair for the um, Purchasing Oversight Committee, which is uh, um, Commissioner Carson, will take a look going forward. Mm -hmm. But today sounds like we have an emergency, so we will, according to you, are you okay with us just moving forward? I'm fine. Okay. That's what All right. Well, move to tab number 18, and this is authorization to renew a contract with alternative environments for courthouse, landscape, and land maintenance in the annual amount of $25,468 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Peacock, again. Yes, ma'am, this is for the, the, the um, landscaping and lawn maintenance here at the courthouse. They will provide 31 um, um, mowings during the basic growing season. Uh, they will provide 15 um, visits during the dormant season, which is an increase from 10, and that's basically re, um, leaf raking and leaf removal. Uh, so this, is in, this contract is increasing a little bit by about $3,500 because they are adding five more leaf removal visits to the contract. This was requoted last year, mm -hmm. um, and alternative environments was uh, provided the most service at the lowest price. Okay. Vice President Robinson. Yeah. So okay. I'll, again, one more time to commission this point. All four of these, or the remaining three, are all time sensitive. Did I hear that right? They're fiscal contracts, right. January through December. All right. So they're really not time sensitive. What happens if, in fact, we don't sign it? Does it? We go month to month, or what? What, what happens in the contract? Because again, there's something about if it's something in the jail or something that we got to do this. I get it. So the question is: Is this essential? Like they talk about the federal government, is this essential? They stop cutting grass. Right? They stop. I get it. It's dead winter. I get it. It's dead winter. But I, I'm just one more time. Answer, um, council, councilor Ken, 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 can you answer the question? What happens if, in fact, we choose to pause for 30 days to our next committee meeting? Um, what happens with this agreement? Do we have, do we owe them? Do we pay them? Do we? I mean, is there some type of if they stop cutting the grass, it's no big deal. But is there some type of well, it goes. And you get what I'm going with this. Yeah, um, I'm going to defer to Bill on part of that because I don't know this specific contract. Yeah. But most contracts either completely expire yep. or they become a month to month until something happens I, and I, there's so many contracts in the county I can't say for certain bill I don't know if this one just stops it does it, 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 it ends on December 31st is the termination date I guess in the meantime we could probably call them and negotiate a 30-day provision why it, yeah. my guess is anything that keeps them getting paid is what they want to do assuming they're doing work right now they've but, already been advised not to do any more work <coughs> so it's contract specific. Most of the time, the annuals like employment contracts would expire. That's why you all approve them in December. Right. Some of these, not necessarily this one, because I looked at it. Some of them, if they're not, if nothing happens, or there's no. For instance, if you have a multi-year that has an annual way out, you don't do anything. It either rolls over to another term, mm -hmm. or it rolls over to a month to month until something else happens. But I have to defer to, to Bill on this specific one. I'm not made with the terms. Yeah, it's it, it just about essentiality. I'm, I'm good. I'm just making my point one more time for things to look at. Mm -hmm. I'm going to yield. No, no big yeah. deal. I didn't know. And it sounds like you said the contract ends December 31st, and you know I'm a fanatic about aesthetics. So i got to have beautification. It's important to myself, and I'm hoping my, <coughs> my colleagues would please accept this so we can move forward in it and allow um, Commissioner Carpenter to take, take the bull by the horns going forward. I, I can't stand to see one piece of paper. And I, my county administrator has uh, definitely caught my disease now mm -hmm. about paper and trash and cigarette butts. So, thank you. We're going to move forward to the next item, which is what? what, what, what 19. 19. 19. Authorization to renew a contract with the Point Security Corporation for annual inspection and maintenance of X ray line scan machine at the courthouse screening station in the Mount of. $3,750 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Bill Peacock. Yes, ma'am. This is a full coverage maintenance and annual inspection of the line scan x-ray machine used down at the security checkpoint. It includes mandatory radiation health inspection 
and any parts labor that would be needed for repair. Uh, this machine will also still be in service once we uh, do the um, changes to the security entrance. Yep. This will be one of the three machines that would be there. Okay. Can you question from the board? I move on to tab 20, authorization to renew a contract with Z Company to <coughs> conduct a quarter quarterly inspections and service of cooling tower water treatment in the amount of $2,640 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Peacock. Yes, ma'am. Z Company provides the monthly testing and treatment of the condenser water which is used to go through all of the HVAC system to keep us cool and warm uh, in both the cooling tower and all the chiller loops where the, where the uh, air actually gets cooled. It includes inspection, calibration, <coughs> and setting of all the chemical feed stations and all the chemicals needed for the year. So this is just a conditioning the water within the HVAC system so that it doesn't harm the HVAC system and provides us the level of comfort that we need. Mm -hmm. Any questions from the board, Commissioner Robinson? Yeah, and, and again, I <laughs> I think to Commissioner Mitchell's point, I, I let it go because again, we can take it offline. Uh, we've got Amoresco in here, and you know, energy audit, energy savings, and again, I've always just I listen and I'm like, okay, but why do we have all these independent maintenance contracts? Why couldn't we can just just consolidate the whole point? And, and, and but we weren't there. Right. First things first, let's just get this going. This will change the toilets. Let's, let's just perfect that. But I'm just seeing. I'm looking at this. It's like, well. Again, you government tends to have little little silos of, of, of all things. And I just like, well, is there an opportunity to leverage and become more efficient and effective at what we do? Um, I'm not stopping. I'm not suggesting we stop. And I'm okay if you guys want to go a different direction. But I'm just, um, and, and sometimes what I hear from administration is just what well, they hear you, but they like, unless you're ordered to do it, an executive order, it says, well, I don't want to do it that way. And I don't see her sometimes when we make suggestions of what y'all should consider, there's no real movement on it. It's a head nod in this room, but it's like, okay, guys, but you're, it's, it's about the taxpayers, not about your comfort. It's the taxpayers that if there's an opportunity, we're suggesting a way to save money or to, to do things differently, then that should be given. Because here we are, it's like, well, didn't we bring this up? And sometimes, to that point, I'm sure things don't stick sometimes. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm looking at this, and, and then you, again, you do things that make me like, okay, let me go back and look at that. What did he just say? I think that this is one of those where we've got a lot of these independent <coughs> contracts, and, and, and there's this, well, we got to maintain it. We got to maintain it that way. And I'm like, mm -hmm. no, we don't. Why are we maintaining it that way? Have, has there at least been consideration to consolidate all these maintenance contracts across this what? half million um, square feet with the, um, no, what, about a million square feet of, 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 of buildings um, within the county, uh, somewhere between 33 as part of Amoresco and a total of 74. And there's a lot of maintenance, and you're saying that you know, we've got a lot of these independent um, maintenance contracts. Why couldn't we just consolidate them in just one and maintain the county? But anyway, I understand we have, um, we have a structure, Madam Chair, and that sounds more administrative. I think from a legislative, um, sometimes we can help with the process, but if that's the way you'd like it to be, we'll let, we'll let it be. Well, I'm looking forward to the recommendations that are coming forward from the Purchase and Oversight Committee, which is very new. We've only had one meeting, and I'm, I'm, I'm quite sure next year it will be more robust in terms of what uh, Director Peacock brings forward, and it probably be more streamlined, like you're suggesting. So I want to give our, our chairwoman an opportunity to just get our arms around it. And Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so with that being said, we'll move to tab 21. Let me just, uh, one, I just want to comment. I just, 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 just one, just one comment. This is date sensitive as well, just for the record. The record it is not. a January 1st through December 31st contract. And, 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 and it's, it, the okay. annual inspection is normally done in January. Got you, got you. Okay, so I just want to get that for the record. But the other thing is, Knowing that we, we had all this coming, knowing that we were going to create this, this whole committee, knowing that this would be kind of in front of us, why have none of us proceeded directly to, the, to Madam Chair to say, hey, we've got these 10 items that are forthcoming. She's probably going to be overwhelmed with all of that, but at least have the opportunity to have put that before us or before her, so we should have at least known that. But we're at the juncture now, and it's time sensitive based on the mere fact of of the contract itself. So, but 
you know, it, it, it's not like it used to be. It's now what it is. And we got to look at that, how that's how we move. So I, to me, we should have brought all of this uh, on December 27th and said, hey, you know, all why people going through the motion and say, this is what we're going to be dealing with. This is what's upcoming and that's going to be on your plate. Then I don't think we would have all these questions of do we pause or give you a chance to look it over or do we keep it moving and we'll let you catch up next year. I'm not a proponent for next year, but I understand where we are and why we're moving forward. That's just me. So, I yield. Thank you, Commissioner Mitchell. Um, we'll move on to the next item. And that's tab number 21. Authorization to award a contract to Barnsley um, Consulting LLC for the Douglas County Courthouse security upgrade and renovation for a total cost of $1,330,214 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Peacock. Yes, ma'am. Uh, this was a rebid. Uh, we bid it early in 2017 and only received one bid, so we did a rebid in August and again only got one uh, responsive bid. And that was from Barnsley Consulting LLC. And we uh, spoke directly. Mark Price spoke directly to three, other, three other contractors, trying to get them to come bid on it. And mm -hmm. verbally, they had told us they were. But at the end of the day, they did not. They did not. Um, the uh, consultant that's been working on this for the sheriff's department has negotiated the contract uh, with Barnsley. Uh, will send it to legal to get them to look at it uh, and uh, but for we're asking that uh, the commission uh, award the contract to Barnsley to get this project underway so it's, from, it's the, more the, I'm sorry, from the initial bid um, through discussions with the contractor we got them to deduct about approximately two hundred and fifty two hundred fifty six thousand um, dollars so the bid was higher we talked to them um, there's a couple of items um, we got them to deduct some money, and then the total price was ended up being one point three three million. And this does include the parking lot. It includes changes uh, in the back. additional parking in the back to the secured parking lot gates, and then the fence mm -hmm. widening that road. Put some more parking. I think about approximately twenty two parking spaces back there, um, and it includes uh, renovations to tax and tag because that's part of the construction the information desk and that closet on the back side of uh, Citizens Hall, plus everything up under the stairs up to about halfway of where the tagline is, will get demolished and that area will be widened. Okay. okay. Any questions from the board on this particular item? Yeah, now this is what I would think we need to keep rolling, stay on task, um, keep, keep it, you know, time sensitive, etc. But, it, but, it, but, it, but it, again, I, I, I think it, it, it gets, um, we, these meetings sometimes gets long, and I'm going to caveat this, that, you know, what is the role of the Board of Commissioners? And it is to provide oversight in this all areas, all 64 areas of, of functional government that we negotiated with the city. We know what this is. Um, and you, you, there is, nobody's exempt from oversight, right? Um, no, no. No, no passage of anything. Now I know we have controls associated with New World and from the directors to the finance to all that. We, we, we get that, but this this um, this this begins an opportunity. Like okay, um, to, to Director Peacock's point, some things shouldn't come. Man, I'm like that's a lot of volume. I get it, but I'm up for like okay, but what should it be? There has to be oversight. Um, I mean, if I looked at TV and I look at all the things that happens in, in government shared metro, it's like it all roads lead through money. There's nobody can tell me otherwise. All roads lead through money. And so it's important that we give the citizens assurance. This is not about a vote of confidence about any one director. It's about us who signed up, who took an oath. It says, no, I took an oath not to the administration. I took an oath to the citizens. All right, so if we have... Um, we, we're at a place where, okay, show me the law that says I got to do it that way. Don't tell me that way. Show me the policy that this is undergirded by. And let's this, this, this revisit it. Um, and so we can either um, expand it or we can contract it. But there's never not a time we can't look at it. And, and so that's, that's what it's like. Well, you should, like, it's like, well, I, I didn't stutter. 
I, I just, it, it was important, like, yeah, let's look at this, because this is like, we just don't know. And it may be one in which uh, I, I'd like to get us billboard, like, okay, that's too much volume, or maybe not, maybe it's just right. But um, it, it, it's important that we take a look at that so we can, um, with assurance, because you'd be surprised what the citizens say about contracts and different things and what's going on and is it fair and so forth. And we really have no answer. We can't really, because have we really done a litmus test? Have we really sampled it? Have we, I mean, a lot of stuff does come before us, but there's also a nice little sliver that's over there in that corner that we had no visibility into. So I want to, um, I, I think this committee, Madam Chair, uh, both chairs, um, are, 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 are respectfully, are important. Um, I, I think it's something that we, we should look at, uh, and it may not be any change, but I know we're getting deep into the pool, we just threw you in the ocean. But, um, <laughs> I, 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 respectfully, I, I just want to, this is something, as you guys know, who have been here a long time, it's something we've talked about on the peripheral. We just get a chance now to go take a look at it. So I just, I yield. So your famous, famous last words, duly noted. Yeah. Yes. Yes, okay. Commissioner Mitchell. All right. And this won't be long. So, uh, with the Samantha Mark, this includes, I don't remember the exact math that we just recently added to the budget that kind of gets you to that mark. But this is the money that's needed. This is a turnkey, I would assume. Uh, yes, sir. 1.3 and whatever the change is. That's correct. Okay. Um, this include, because I know at one time we talked about a form of a kiosk, but I think we got away from that still having the young lady up front. Yes, well the plan, currently the plan is to, that information desk rolls, so it would, we would move it where the current security station is. Got it, okay, okay. So that, because me, and, and, and you may take a look at this down the road, my thoughts were to have you know, like the a kiosk of some sort where you can type in and say, I need to go X where, where it is versus a person, mm -hmm. you know, but we'll, that's a whole other conversation. But when are we looking at kind of getting moving on this, if, if and when this passed? Um, we started, next. okay, so really we soon. forward, okay. Yeah, so, as soon as we can get the contract back and forth. Got it. I think the original, the other day, it was, they could start January 14th, but that was, if they had a contract, they got January last right. meeting. And, and oh, that so includes, it'll be soon. Got that includes the doors that are all downstairs, locking those off to where you can't exit and, it can't, and all that kind of good stuff. Um, yeah, it'll be emergency exit. Emergency exit. Emergency but, exit. The project it, should take, according to the schedule supplied by the contractor, approximately six months. Got it. Um, so but June, uh, July. And six months from whatever date start they start, that. that'll, that'll <laughs> be the end time frame of six months to get it all done. Yes. Okay. That's perfect. Okay. Cool. All right. I need Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, we'll move on. Uh, for commissioners, we have the approval of the expenses tomorrow. Please take a look at your expenses and we will approve accordingly. Um, discussion item we have is the tax commissioner here. Um, so he, he's not here, so I'll move on to the next. Sure. Mm -hmm. Discussion item? Yes. All right, I got one really quickly. Um, first a year, I'm only going to do this <coughs> twice a year, probably mid year. But um, Director Hallman, real quick, we have a finance committee meeting today uh, because we had to move our, our work session ahead from um, this coming Monday because of the national holiday. What's on our agenda for today? Uh, what's on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from the last meeting, the Splost Arbitrage Calculation Update, the Cobb-Douglas Community Service Project Update, um, the, fin the preliminary financial report for December, as you know, we'll have about three of those before, I mean two of those before we have a final. And then uh, that's it. Okay. All right, very good. So that's for today. Yes, sir. It's today, pretty, three o'clock. Pretty easy meeting. Uh, second thing I want to talk about really quickly is um, Director uh, Valentine. Um, the um, we got a pretty full cool transportation committee meeting, which is still going to be. On, we didn't change that. That'll be this upcoming Tuesday at Tuesday. two o'clock. All right, and real quickly, what's on our agenda? Uh, we have on the transit services side, we have an update on the third party contract negotiations. We have a uh, discussion about additional architectural service for the part of Watkins uh, for the transportation center addition. Uh, it's an item on the, on the agenda. Uh, we also have an update on the work scope with the collaborative firm. We have a uh, Recalibration of the SPLOS uh, transportation project list. We have a uh, discussion about sidewalks request at Alethea Springs High School. 
Uh, we have a discussion about the uh, bid process and status of the 2019 resurfacing uh, project. Uh, we have a discussion about the operational uh, realignment at, at the DOT uh, pay structure, the field crews in particular. We have a discussion about the lighting needs at I-20 interchange uh, ramps. We have a discussion about supplemental mowing needs at, uh, along state routes. Uh, we have a discussion about uh, establishing a no parking zone on uh, Cochrane Industrial Boulevard. And we have a handful of project updates. Very good. Uh, we got a pretty full cool day. Um, just as an FYI, um, the city of Douglasville's um, um, chairman of transportation, Dr. LaShawn Bergdanley, will be there with um, a representative from the school board to also hear what we're saying regarding the first item dealing with transit. But just so FYI, we're going to have a full meeting, Madam Chair. It's going to be busy. I yield. Okay. I just received a notification that uh, Tax Commissioner Brett Baker could not be here. Well, he was here earlier, but he had to leave for a meeting in Atlanta, so I will. I'll circle back with them to see if it was something that he would like to return to the agenda. If not, it would be something that maybe he and I could address. Okay, uh, Attorney Bernard, do we need to go into executive session? We do, Madam Chair, for all three uh, litigation, <coughs> excuse me, lit litigation, personnel, and just excuse me, all two. All two. All two. <laughs> personnel and litigation. Okay, three. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Motion and second. All in favor, please say aye. Raise your hand. the same and the motion carries. Please take 10 minutes yep. to get your lunch in return. Yep. Thank you. Everybody else? All right, we're good. Madam Chair. All right. Okay, we're back on. Again, thank you all for um, engaging in such great conversation. Are, are there any other things that we need to discuss before this meeting is adjourned? No, ma'am. With that being said, this meeting is adjourned.